the name is Law Nation. As we continue to grind to shine, be sure to hit the like, share this content, let that friend or that neighbor know where to go when it's time to tune in to Cowboys Sports Talk and beyond. This including the ice wall. Let's get it. Mama said, there'll be days just like this. Cowboys, they all in with EOL contracts. We don't have to pay Dak Prescott either. You know what I'm saying? Or either. Let's get it. Come on. Stand to your feet. Lean with it, rock with it. Lean with it, rock with it. Come on. Let's get it. Hey. Who? Shout out to you. And you. And you. Let's get it. Come on with it, baby. Hit that like button for your boy. Hit the like button. Share this content. Let that person know, hey, you're listening to nothing but the best. Come on. You could do it with your own failure. If you only knew the power. Five, four, three, two, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Watch how this beat jump in, baby. They say ain't no party like a cowboy party. But what about a Law Nation crew? Ah, come on, baby. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. What's up? It's election season, so your boy been very busy. I've been very busy, but we're going to get the right people in. Shout out to all of the judges out there, the lawyers. Shout out to the attorneys. Shout out to all of the people that's running uh, for their selective, collective roles in this area. And I, I really appreciate you guys so much for hanging in, rocking with the nation. All right, so we're going to jump into it, the end-of-life contracts. Uh, Dak Prescott, we're going to talk about him. Of course, that... I just went ahead and put his name in the title because I could be talking about soccer. You know, we could be talking about hockey. It's going to swing around back to Rain Dakota Prescott. That's just how it goes. So he is the uh, master key for all of this, right? And a lot of people still in the middle of the road, no matter how I tell them uh, that you got to pay your mortgage first. Some people would say, nah, I just pay the light bill, the water bill. They can put a lien on the property, man. They can come take it. You know, I get all the way to the end of the year. And, you know, since I paid all of these notes, man, they going to still give me the deed to the house. You know, that's just how things go. No, no, no. It don't operate that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lobby is law. <laughs> yes, indeed. Shout out to you, Ryan. Yes, indeed. I'm trying to work some things. I'm trying to bend some things. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when y'all drive down a certain street in Texas, you say, hey, man, that Law Nation Avenue right there. You know what I'm saying? You see Nolan Ryan over there. You know, see dirt and the whiskey. But, man, I'm on Law Nation Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> Put me a street in Oak Cliff, baby. Shout out to Oak Cliff Inn. Uh, appreciate everybody, man, for jumping in and fall in. I'm going to have to get that beat, you know, fall in, you know. But neither here nor there. Mm. Let's talk about one thing before we get into this, because I, I, I really like this kid and and he caught my eye, and I really, really, really would love for the Cowboys, before we dive into all of this contract stuff, that, that he become my favorite now, you know. And he said he'll weigh in or what he will weigh in, and he weighed in today at 366 pounds, man. And let me see if I can find it, y'all. Um, bear with me. Nick Harris got a chance to uh, 
pull this up, and it's only about a minute and such. Let's listen to his cat. Ma'am, did you weigh in? I haven't. Okay. Weigh in tomorrow. So, which is today? Everybody that yeah. want to know, you'll see tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you expecting? What, where do you want to be to be the most effective? That you could be as a player. Uh, this past season, I played 365, and mm -hmm. that's where I feel comfortable at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a pretty big increase from what you played at in previous seasons. What was fine that decision? Uh, you know, you know how man is. I mean, you yeah. want yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We got to yeah. grow into our bodies. Yeah. And this is me, as y'all see. I'm a big guy, big frame, yeah. and that's just how it is. I just grew into my body, man. How much has your frame been a talking point with teams when you've been in interviews or had conversations? Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. But uh, let y'all know, I'm doing everything at the combine before y'all even ask. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of y'all going to be like, when I run this 40, you know? Shock, I'm going to shock a lot of y'all, you know? So. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What do you anticipate running? Four, 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 five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it, man. Uh, shout out to Nick Harris, man. Salute to him and all of the hard labor that he's doing for the Cowboys, man, with the silver and blue and the star to side of the helmet. But Trevande, Trevandre Sweat, you know, Trevande Dre Sweat is, is a real good guy, man. And and what, what I've realized and I learned that, you know, I, I don't really like to talk hypotheticals, man. I, I really like to talk the tangible things. And I hate the tangible seasons, right? Well, the intangible season, I meant to say, the hypothetical season or the lion season right now. And, you know, everybody got their, you know, film analysis, they film breakdown on things and these sorts of things, and they, they put it out there. And, and I get it, right? Um, I, I would love to do such. But, man, uh, I'm tired of doing all of that work for a player to go to the Seattle Seahawks, <laughs> for a player to go to the Chiefs, or for the player to go to – uh, Washington or something like that so um, if it is a situation in a scenario that if one of those boys land here boy then I'll do my film analysis and reviews but uh, I have been painted into a corner because if I show a clip of any college player they coming at me the four corners of the multiverse they coming at me they shanking me they taking my videos down so I'm sitting there like you know what I, I can't for this year dive into eight to 10 hours or to 16 hours of breaking down film and going over film for them to ultimately uh, claim it. And I, and I appreciate those who do it, but I'm on a different type of scale or level, right? Because they come at me with a, Hey, you don't own the rights to this footage, et cetera. Right. But somebody else can post it and I can't. So that's just how the rules are. <laughs> Unfortunately, y'all, I don't, I don't pissed off enough people not the one who made the rules, right? Do it, yeah. do it, right. hey, do it, yeah. hey. I pissed off a lot of people, basically, so I can't be posting college film. But I can tell you, film that I get my own, you know, I, we will get a chance to get those things going. But I would love to have Sweat here on uh, this particular team, and we do have access. Yes, indeed. Game time, Brian says, keep up, law. We need to keep the pressure on these cats. Cap boy is killing me, man. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. He is killing us, man. And and I'm at the point. I'm really at the point that when we start to think about, you know, the philosophy. Do is it more of Cap Boy? Or is Jerry, Jerry got too many things on his plate, man. He got DNA testing. He got to find salt to put on his McGriddle. Jerry Jones literally got a lot of things going on, man. I don't think that Jerry, at his age, got the time to be dealing with all of this football stuff. I think that for right now, the dude that got all of the energy is Stephen Jones. I call him by his full name, John Stephen Jones. Oh, my goodness. Let's listen to John Stephen Jones, by the way. Stephen, where do you stand with uh, Dak and his, and his status? Yeah, we won't coming? be, you know, we won't be expounding on those type of things with our negotiation. I mean, that's obviously something, you know, as we move forward, uh, you know, hopefully we'll continue to uh, make progress and communicate, but it's not going to be something, you know, sorry to tell you guys, but we're not going to be giving reports on how things are going. 
So that's Stephen Jones right there. You know, he, he said that he's not going to be giving reports on how things are going. Now, now, he said this about, you know, a couple of days ago. And it, it just, and to some people, it went into one ear out the other, right? And we started to think, okay, cool. I get all of that. The art of negotiation, right? You want to gain as much leverage as possible. And now um, I'm looking at it from what Mike Gelkins wrote or what have you. And we're going to listen to 105.3, the fan on these uh, topic lines here. Let's listen to these boys right quick. And uh, hold on. Let me move that out of the way. There we go. Let's go. Or with a similar report, Bobby Belt, what do you make of that? Uh, I mean, if Michael is talking about it, it's legitimate. Like, Michael is, he and uh, typically I will, anything that Michael Gelkin or Todd Archer are talking about is going to make me sit up and take a little bit more notice. Um, no. But I haven't. Yeah, this is something that we've heard leaked a little bit or suggested a little bit is that, like, oh, this could be their play, but. You know, it, it feels like this tide. It's almost like the the Fields versus trading or, or Fields versus Caleb Williams discussion in Chicago, where we keep hearing this changing tide of like, oh, it's going to be Fields. Oh, it's going to be number one. It's Fields. Same sort of thing where we keep hearing, oh, Cowboys could let this play out, and then it's like, no, they're going to get this done. They're going to sign it probably in the next two weeks or something. They've got to get it done. Uh, and then you hear Steven say stuff the other day like, hey, we we don't have to get it done. Yeah. Like we want to, but we don't have to get it done. We can all right, so what what he's lamenting or or, or in, in, you know referring to is that Gelkin, John Mishota. There's one other beat writer that 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 I kind of listen to. His name is Tipper Brand, Brandon Laurie. I I do like those three right there. Um, they're not gonna BS you. They're not. They're not going to clickbait you. They're going to get it out of the mud, you know, he, he, even though, you know, Gelkin, you know, he, he may, he may, you know, hit you up and say, hey, man, you didn't credit this or credit that when he do some film stuff or what have you. And I get it. Shout out to Gelkin. No shade upon him, you know, but John Mishota, hey, if, if I need something, man, I reach out and I I hit John Mishota up and it's going to hit and respond back immediately. Right. And John Mishota is one of those guys that I know for sure that that he ain't out there for the thing. <laughs> so uh, I, I like this because right now I get it. We got these guys that's in this end of life contract, right? We got a team and a and and to be fair, you know, we saying that we are all in. How? How are we all in when your quarterback got an end of life contract? Basically, if he if you do not extend him, it will be a sixty million dollar cap hit for this year, and it'd be a thirty six million dollar cap hit for next season. So you in total embody and ready to eat ninety six million dollars of cap, you know. And then you have after I believe because you pushed everything into the voidable years there. Uh, after um, after 2026 or after 2025, you will hit another 15 or $16 million on dead money, right? So that's a lot of money for nothing. And I get it. People are ready to move on. But I tell people this more and more when we talk and have these conversations. Who do you want to move on to? The unknown? You want to move on with Trey Lance? You want to move on with the Cooper Rush or whoever we draft in the draft? Or do you want to go get a Sam Donaldson, right? I think he's a free agent right now. What do you want to do? And I get it. Most people be yelling out, hey, give us, give us, uh, what's move name? Um, give us Pat Mahomes. Well, there's only one Pat Mahomes and he ain't going nowhere. Right? That's like you married to a, your boo thing and you say, hey, Lord, give me Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? I want Beyonce. I, I want Trina. You know what I'm saying? Or, or I want, you know, give me uh, give, give me whoever, you know. They already taken, you know. I'm just saying I'm using them as an example, by the way. 
So you got to have to dance or love the one you with. Basically, that's Luther. Uh, I think he had a song. Or ride the horse you rode in on with. So you're going to have to make sure that where you are standing at now is your base. Now, I get it. We want to win the Super Bowl. But what would be the number one motivation? Security for most of these guys. Action pal, we can't be afraid to move either way. It's easy when you're talking about someone else's money, right? But who is out there? Like, I'm just being 1,000 with you, Action. Who is out there willing to purchase a car? You got a seven-year note on. You get to the sixth year, and you just let the, se- the, the final year of the note, you just pass it by. You know, you don't pay not one note of that. You know, who does that, right? You'll be a fool to do that, right? And that's just principles of finances 101, right? And that's all I'm saying. So even with Dak Prescott, you got down to his last last bid of his contract. You can't trade him away. And now you need more and more pieces because you got to have somewhere, some shape, form, or fashion, a contract on the table for C.D. Lamb. And for sure, you got to start catering and getting things together for Michael Parsons. The Cowboys are not moving financially those ways. Uh, L says uh, Alex Smith was a known commodity before they moved on with him and got the unknown. That's bull sugar because Pat Mahomes was drafted in the first round. Can somebody let me know, was Pat Mahomes a first-round draft pick, yes or no? Yes or no? Was Pat Mahomes a first-round draft pick? Did they plan and precisely move there? People think that Pat Mahomes got over there to the Kansas City Chiefs by chance. And let me know. Let me know and educate me. Did Pat Mahomes start all of his game his rookie year? What's the answer to that? No. But the Cowboys, by chance, are thinking that this is going to happen for them. And was And look, this is crazy. Was Pat Mahomes going into a situation where Andy Reid was on the end of life of his contract? Don't know where his kids are going to eat at for the next year or where they're going to stay at for the next year. Mike McCarthy is under those type of stipulations. Mike McCarthy is under the stipulation that if they don't succeed within less than a year, they got to pack their bags up and leave. So those are not the same situations. And on top of that, excuse me for anyone who's trying to debate me, and we can open up the phone lines, and you can't win on this. Because from my knowledge, Alex Smith didn't have a $60 million cap hit, nor did Alex Smith had a no-trade clause or no-franchise tag situation on his contract. So those are not Apple's and apples those are far from apples and oranges so you're gonna have to come up with a better strategy you always got to even in fight you got to have your slip you got to slip you got to know how to slip that punch in there even when you're mopping the floor you have to mop where a way where you don't track the dirt all back and ruin everything. And that's what the Cowboys did. They didn't mop towards the door. <laughs> you know, back, you know, they, they fool around tracking mud all over everything. So it's not a great situation. Hey, we, we don't have to get it done. Yeah. Like, we want to, but we don't have to get it done. We can restructure it. The yeah, way it is. Exactly. That they do they don't feel like they have to do anything with his contract in order to operate the way they want to this offseason. And of course the key question is, okay, are these reporters being used for leverage or are they setting the table that they really may not give him sixty million dollars a year anytime soon? That's the question here. Mm. Because when David Moore writes it, I think leverage. When Michael Gelkin follows up, I say, Oh, is this is this not happening? Is this 
Is this actually going to be a reality? That's the way my brain is thinking about it right now. Look, I mean, that is that is a good question. It is the reality. Like, what are they going to do? What What is their whole motivation behind these kind of throwing out their little tidbits to the morning news or to certain media members? Like, are they... In, <laughs> and this is it's really... Like, are you really going to negotiate in the public media? Is that how you're doing it? Like, that's, that's the way you want to go? They've done it a lot of times They before. have. A lot of teams have done it. Like, is that... But is that really the right way to go about it? I mean, I, I don't know the answer to that. So, when they brought back McCarthy, I remember that was one of the things that you had said, Chop, is that you felt like hey, if you're going to bring back McCarthy, it can't be on a one-year deal. At the very least, you need to tack on a meaningless extra year. It's got to look like there's some level of security. And Michael Gelkin writes in this article, he says that, you know, short-term contracts are not necessarily a surprise following a 48-32 to beatdown in the wildcard round. He goes, still, there is some resulting discomfort and unhappiness within the building. Wow. One person close to the situation <laughs> said the sentiment extends deeper than the coaches, adding that little sense of commitment is felt anywhere. And... Look, I think that whether you're Dak or Mike McCarthy or some of these other people on the roster that, that feel, if Dak is one of them, feel offended or uneasy or unhappy with the lack of commitment, tough? Yeah. I mean, tough. Like, don't get your ass kicked in the wild card round by a team that's not better than you okay. at home. Okay, 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 cool, cool. Hardline stance. Well, guess what? At the end of the day, I have the leverage still. I'm on the higher step in the Suns game. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, <clears throat> with that being said, you you are you are looking at this collectively, whereas the leverage is at play. When you say, "Okay, cool, I, I get it," you know, we we didn't win in the playoff game. We didn't do what we supposed to do. There are 31 teams out there that can argue and say the same thing out of the 31 teams we can literally point the finger and say well you know what was the guy that played for the arizona cardinals oh he got a quarter of a billion dollars did they win multiple playoff games this year oh i'll wait jalen hurts did they win multiple playoff games this year Okay, all right, cool. Let's continue around this uh, uh, Herbert. Did they win? Watson. So I'm not saying that the playoff game is the only way that, that can calculate your biggest bag because if that's the case in the scenario, if you win playoff games, you should get the biggest of the bag. It should be a situation and scenario that Jimmy Garoppolo, just based off of the stance that most people are saying, he should have been the highest paid quarterback in the last 10 years because he had more playoff wins than Aaron Rodgers, right? We should use playoff wins to that degree and say bump all of what teams are doing. Just look at the individual quarterback, and they should benefit from the team that's winning in the playoff game, and they should up the ante. Even my guy, uh, Lamar Jackson, he's 2-5 and five in the playoff, right? Should they rescind the MVP for him for being 2-5? and five? Like, y'all – Y'all help me out with this whole situation, whereas people want to take out the quarterback in general and say that we only want want to pay team pay a team based off of what they do in the playoff, especially the quarterback. Like make that make sense for me because I, I'm the one that's slow to this. Right? Just let me know. I'm just need to know. Still, I'm on the higher step in the Suns game. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm. No. Punching up. <laughs> it's somewhere else, and you can possibly rot. Yeah, and I mean, that's the way that I would look at it, is that you're you're really risking something here. But, I mean, I also think that if the Cowboys want to hold the position of none of you have earned anything, then they all have to kind of eat that. Whether, I mean, whether, whether they care or not. Yeah. Like, Dak right, may not right, care. Right. Dak may be like, fine, you're the one who's really jeopardizing things. Dak may not care, but... For Dallas to have an internal sentiment of we're not giving any of you anything after what happened last year, I don't hate the thought process. Yeah, but they should pay CeeDee Lamb. Well, so here's what's interesting. <laughs> like, like, I, I had your little bulbs and whatever. Like, you have to pay CeeDee Lamb. Yeah, I, you, 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 you do. But I guess the thing is, like, if you're going to move on, if you're going to, like, not pay Dak, 
and you're going to move on from Dak, yeah. then the play is to not pay CD and not pay Micah, and it's to trade him. All. Yeah, that's the, that, that could be the play, but it'll never happen, ever. No, I, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. But, I mean, I could easily make the argument that they're in purgatory now. And if I was Jerry, I would come back to Dak and I'd say, uh, son, we're in purgatory today. We're trying to get to heaven. Right. <laughs> you can make the argument as an organization. I still don't think you can make that as a quarterback. Like, he just finished second in the MVP. He played his best football. You can't, I, I don't think I that. I understand there's that. There's two different purgatories. Mm. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a that, regular season and a playoff. No. Well, well, there's multiple levels of purgatory. And, and what is purgatory altogether? You know, it's neither heaven nor hell. You just waiting, right? And you are waiting for the ultimate decision to happen. And you may be sitting there thinking, okay, at some point, I'm sitting here cooling and I'm waiting for this to happen for me to, to get out of this place. And I'm still here when somebody's going to break me up out of here, you know? And, uh, for us from a quarterback perspective, who remembered Tony Romo, right? He broke us up out of that, 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 that ball and chain of us being in either neither heaven or hell. Right. So and then you had, the, you, of course, from Romo, we go to goes to Dak Prescott. One can argue that even from Dak, Dak, from Romo to Dak Prescott, consistently we have been a more of a winnable team with number four on this team, right? But the problem is, is that we've been such a private franchise or such a purgatorial franchise that we even looked at that moment saying that hey we want more so some of the people put some of the bad pitfalls from their previous quarterback on to Dak Prescott how many losing seasons have we had with Dak Prescott by the way or how many eight and eight eight and eight eight and eight seasons did we have with Dak Prescott not many not many at all you know but I get it it's two and four two and six in the playoff that ain't nothing to brag or beat your chest on and say hey man look what we have done look what we have accomplished that ain't nothing but when you start to contextualize things who's been here the same for these 28 years who's the constants who's the the the, the finite factor of the decision makings collectively been here the same because i can clearly tell y'all until I'm Cowboys blue in the face. If you pick up a different coach and put him in the Romo years, you would for sure go further than what Romo made it at with Jason Garrett. That's not up for debate, right? Coaching matters, right? But people think that, hey, your quarterback can be the uh, end-all, be-all and, and, and just clear off everything. But I'm, but I'm, but I can recall this right here. Roger Staubach had a Tony Dorsett. Roger Staubach had Doomsday defense. Did 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 the Roger Staubach had Tom Landry? Did Tony Romo had any of those variables there? No. Troy had Irvin. The nineties. Offensive line. Emmett. Can we recall any of those two quarterbacks previously that we had had any of those kinds of caliber of either Jimmy Johnson or Tom Landry? No. As much as I love Roger Starbuck, as much as I love Troy Aikman, them boys probably would never lift up a Lombardi trophy with Jason Garrett as their head coach. That's plain and simple, man. Or with a medal and owner, man. That's just what it is. But, Law, you just, just complaining. No, nah, I'm just explaining. And I'm telling y'all the truth. And then you, you finally get a coach of the kind of caliber of Mike McCarthy. You say, hey, make sure you take Jason Garrett's son, Kelly Moore. Kelly Moore. Uh, Stelios uh, says... Uh, Pay CD, pay CD, pay CD. Come on, man. Yes, indeed.
Yes, indeed. Come on, baby. Yes, indeed. So that's just what I'm saying here, ladies and gentlemen. And if we can go resume for resume, and, and I know my guy Content M would think that, hey, no, that's not factual. But if I had a gun or a rifle to his head and he had the choices and the decisions to have the coach Tom Landry or Jason Garrett, he's sitting there like, hey, man, hey, Jason Garrett, I love you, but give me Tom Landry. Oh, man, give me Jimmy Johnson, right? Come on, man. Give me give me Jimmy Johnson error with the hands off approach of what Jerry was doing. Jerry was busy trying to, to, to market the team, right? <laughs> but there's somebody out here think that learning on the fly would have been the perfect choice and the option for us. For us to take even from the offensive, collectively speaking, that an offensive coordinator that was so great with us only survive one year in a perfect situation with a quarterback that's supposed to have been better than Dak Prescott. And now, ever since then, ever since, look, the craziest part about this, and I'm talking about Kelly Moore, ever since he's been gone, he's been downgrading that quarterback. <laughs> you know, he's downgraded when he went over there to Justin Herb because Herb was looking terrible with him over there, right? And now he's with, oh, my goodness, Jalen Hurts. I can't wait for this season. Come on, season. Kick on off, baby. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, Flo, was it was it Bedo? Bedo, appreciate you. He says Baker Mayfield is available. To get Baker Mayfield, you still owe $60 million for Dak Prescott contract. And you would still owe the $36 million the following year. And Baker Mayfield ain't going to come over here for peanuts. Baker Mayfield is going to want north of $40 million. He's going to want money. Y'all think Baker Mayfield is going to say, hey, man, I, I'll take the discount. Yeah, man. Every quarterback is a Ron Shazier hit away. And if Baker Mayfield can go to Cleveland and disappear. The market there is not as stringent as, dare I say, the Cowboys market. And if he can go to Tampa Bay, the market there is not as stringent or a all of these cameras in the face like Dallas. The moment Baker comes here, the media will crumble and crush him for all of the inefficiencies that he presents. And even though you guys want to credit him for that, that he won a playoff game this year, right? Y'all want to credit him for that. Pull up what he did this year, stat side by side. And now you be sitting there like, man, he's not even close in the same room as Dak Prescott as it relates to throwing the ball. I digress. Oh, there's a, you're not relevant. Like there's no reason to watch your games, and there's okay, you're 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 technically a contender, you're a division champ, probably possibly, until we get to the postseason. There's two different type of purgatories. It's okay, you're on that third level of <laughs> postseason. There's two different type of purgatories. It's okay, you're on that third level of contenders versus you can be a top five drafting team. I'm I would. I would not pick them. I was going to pick against them in all likelihood in the divisional round if they would have made it everything else. But we can't say it's not just some impossibility at the start of the playoffs every year. We're not talking about like, well, it's completely impossible for the Cowboys to go on a run and win the Super Bowl. <laughs> like they're talented enough. That to me is not purgatory. Purgatory is like you're you are stuck in the middle yeah. and there there is no hope of going up or down even or, the, but, or, or, or below the, the commanders have been stuck. Yeah. Forever, the Chicago Bears have been stuck since the beginning of time with their with their quarterback. Hey, what's the number? Is it still? There's never been a four thousand yard passer in the history of the Bears, which is an absurd note, especially with the way the game's gone. But yeah, that, yeah. that's that's being stuck now. What I think is interesting here is one of the last lines of Michael's 
article where he Again, says... Again, this is Michael Gelkin saying a Dak <laughs> Prescott offseason extension is not promised. This came out at 10 o'clock last night. Yeah, mm. and at 11 o'clock Indy time. So he's pushing this way late because he, he's oh, an yeah. Indy. So this is the East Coast. He's pushing it out near midnight where and, he's at. And why would he be writing it that late in Indy, Bob? As you're about why? to find out. Why? Uh, why? I, mean, why? I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, he, may have, he may have just uh, been a little busy bee, or maybe he was out late at a restaurant and talking to somebody that made him say, I need to go write something real quick. Yeah. Talk to me later. Yeah. Peter what King, is, who went on G-Bag yesterday and finally retired, he said, yeah, I've retired because, like, I just I, I, I didn't want to go. I wasn't excited for certain events like the Combine. He goes, I'm excited to be in bed by 9.15. At the Combine, you're out every night till 1 a.m. Part of Yeah, yeah, it's part of the networking part, man, out there at the Combine. Um, and, and I appreciate you, Stelios. Thank you for your support. He says, give get me Derrick Henry to, yeah, yeah. Um, Granted, granted, um, <clears throat> I think that the threat of the run game will be great. The threat of the run game will be great. Being able to stop the run would be another awesome thing to do. Uh, we, we we definitely need those two things there, uh, the threat of the run game and to stop the run game. And, and of course, people will say, hey, you know, better decisions from the quarterback. I, I, I agree with that, you know. I agree with that. You you got to have better decisions, but you got to have better options too. And and I and I let I let people know that hey, it is what it is. But purgatory is purgatory. <laughs> you got to plan properly. You got to plan properly, and you don't go into a season where everybody is on a one year deal. Football is not a full full one year. It's not. When these, when these coaches move and get their family all here, they're looking at houses. They're looking at condos. They're looking at places to stay and lay their head. The wife, they're looking for places to put their kids in school at in these particular eras, right? Areas, I meant to say. And now you got to learn the whole area. You got to get your maps out, you know, and it's complex. You know, you work out in Frisco. You play in Arlington, right? Those are new things. It takes time to get adjusted. That's life outside of football. The continuity, the rapport of everything. So when you're thinking only on a one-year situation, you got all of that, and then plus you got to contextualize that, hey, when you get to the playoff, because I'm truly, I truly believe that this is a playoff kind of caliber team. I don't think that we are a team that's only going to win six or seven games. I don't think such, right? I think that this team can still get you 10 or more. I'm looking at this team anywhere between 12 and 5 is the floor, ladies and gentlemen. 12 is the floor. And when you start to think of those things, right, what you think these boys are going to do when they get to the playoff time and those job openings going to hit up? You think they're going to focus on winning the chip when you gave them an end-of-life contract? What y'all think? Just, just from a logical way of thinking, using your mental fortitude and mind to this whole situation. Self-preservation is a real thing. Y'all think that Dan Quinn was really thinking about Beating the Green Bay Packers, what would be his ultimate incentives of doing such? What would he get out of that if they sit back and plan to beat the Green Bay Packers? What do he get out of that? All of the fame, all of the fortune, it will go to the Mike McCarthy. It's going to go under his resume. When you have someone, and I'm not trying to shank I'm not trying to shake the man with the knife. But he said it himself. When he saw Parsons his rookie year, he didn't know that he was going to be that much of a dominant threat as the edge. D-Law got hurt. He had to move Parsons down on the edge because we were razor blade thin on edge rushers. And then it opened up his dimensions of his mind. And he said, damn, this guy can also rush the passer on an elite type of level. 
So he began, he began to be the mad scientist of moving parcels around like chess piece. He did it again the second year. Let's move him around a little bit more, but let's keep him more on the edge. But then the third year hit, he got less creative. Somebody argued and said that he became lazy with Parsons. The creativity went out the door. And I, I, I do agree with my guy, Cowboys Beat, and I also agree with Okoye. Based off of sure numbers alone, Parsons still had his best year collectively from stats and accolades his first year, his rookie year, juxtaposed to these last two seasons. And I'm not saying that Parsons is falling off, by the way, but creativity stopped being creative. Those are the facts. And when you start to think about going into this year, the 2024 season, I know Super Bowl can motivate the hell out of people. It can. But that's how you're going to incentivize this? Nah. Shoot. Well, we got ways to adjust his cap number for this year. So, I mean, we are, you know, obviously between Dak and between Micah and CD, it's, you know, the salary cap's real for us, uh, you know, with those three guys, you know, in a situation where we want to, you know, do deals with all three of them. So, you know, uh, do you get to do everything you want to do with the salary cap? I don't think any team does. But uh, All right, so – and I'm only I only played that little snippet there to echo the fact that Mike McCarthy, Mike Zim, they don't have time. <laughs> they don't have time to be at the combine because they they are in win now mode, and every every man got to be a king of his own castle, and they want to prove a point. Man's we 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 are conquerors. We are much more than conquerors, right? We are looking at this thing saying that I'm not finna fall uh like this. I'm gonna at least fall fighting, you know, and that's the that's the good thing about believe it or not, of being in this spot in February, right? But what happens when it's time for you to push that extra little push? You need to have some type of commitment. And them boys don't have that commitment outside of their inner personal feelings about this. So by them not being able to go to the combine, they are leaving everything in the hands of the Jones boys. Right. And I know Jerry right now, he's sweating like R. Kelly or he's sweating like Meek Mills right now. <laughs> he's sweating. I mean, God, no, he's sweating like Meek Mills right now. You know, he's sitting there like, man, I don't know, man. I hope this paternity test don't come out the way it is and I think it will and I don't know and I need to get my mind set together get this paper play, paperwork together you know all I'm saying is Jerry uh, w- 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 take this advice from little law right over here just just pay it up man just pay it up bro <laughs> she don't have to lie to kick it you know the Luke Kane but that's a whole nother conversation that's personal but what I'm saying here is that Jerry Jones is sweating like Meek Mills right and on top of that, you got all of your boys looking at these guys. They can't look for this particular draft to say, okay, this dude is going to be really good year four, year five. You ain't finna draft for the next coach. <laughs> you need to draft for this coach right here. So that's the good thing. So we should see the BPA approach out of all of this. We got another super chat. Uh, there are known knowns and there are known unknowns. Okay, I feel you. You know, I got you. Well, what I'm saying is that there are known knowns and that there are known <laughs> unknowns. But there's also unknown unknowns. Things we don't know that we don't know. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. That, that Meek Mills uh, picture of him with the same shirt that Puff Diddy got. That even said, man, come on, man. Come on, man. Hey, hey, we homeboys over here. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. Hey, man, right now, bro, if, if me and Vach going somewhere and we got the same shirt on, I'm like, hey, man, you going to change? 
Oh, I'm going to change, man. Come on. One of us got to change. If me and Sky or Boss Cowboy, we somewhere, and we got the same shirt, same shoes. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, man, got a man that over. How you get the same sweater, man? Hey, man, man law. Man law states that, hey, one of us got to change this doggone sweater, man. Come on, man. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. <laughs> man law, two men must not share an umbrella, you know? That's like sharing straws, man. I go ahead and get wet, dog. Yeah, 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 I get wet, dog. I, mean, I can't crawl up under the umbrella under you. Nah, man, I'm good, man. Circle the block, man. I'll be right back. I'm going to take my shirt off and put it over my head, man. That's just man law, man, you know? <laughs> Man law, two men must not never share the same drink and drink out of the same straw. Those are things that you just have to do as a man, you know. So, Meek Mills, man, I know you going after DJ Academics, but, hey, all he did was just read the report, and that's what the document said. That's just what it is, people. Yeah. <laughs> Corey says Pete did it, took him shopping. Women be shopping. You can't stop a woman from shopping, right? So P did it. If you go shop for law, man, just go go down there in Arlington. There's a whole bunch of cowboys gear and all of this. Just buy all of that, you know, <laughs> and go to Jerry World and buy all of the uh, the sweets and everything. But I ain't going to be with you, dog. You just go ahead and buy all of that. You know, I, I just be sitting back chilling, you know. And then when you come back, then we ain't going to be wearing the same shirts at the same time. I, 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 I'm definitely not going to turn down you buying merch for me. <laughs> but shout out to Puff Daddy and Meek Mills, you know. But neither here nor there. Damn! <laughs> Let's listen to this. You know, we're certainly going to be able to, uh, you know, go out and go to work and, and, and get the things done that we feel like we need to get done to be successful. Do you want to do those deals this offseason? Yeah, we're not, not like I said, won't expound on any details, timing, amounts, anything. No, no, like not timing, but you said you want to do deals off Get them, cl get them, Clarence. Get them, Clarence. All right, all right, so, so, so the backstory of this, the reason why I played that part was, um, according to Gelkin, again, Mike Gelkin, or Michael Gelkin, according to him and a few others, is that they haven't met with Parsons rep, nor C.D. Lamb rep, nor Todd France people. And uh, we, me talking to my guy Cowboys Beat the other day, just, the, just last night on the podcast, he was saying that they didn't expect even in 2019 for the salary cap to do such or what have you. Here's what I'm thinking. When you are a mom and pops business, your sense of urgency is not that that of someone with fire up there, you know what. You know, your sense of urgency is cool because you are comfortable enough to know that when you walk in through those doors of those buildings, that if your name tag or of your door says Executive Vice President of Operation Stephen Jones, that that sign gonna be there. That parking spot is going to always say until you dead and pushing up daisies, it's going to say executive vice president of operation, Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones, for the life of his time here in Cowboys land, there's nobody that's going to fire him right outside of this paternity testing. And if conduct unbecoming becomes really crazy and some stuff leak out, they can force him to step down and hold a bunch of other stuff. But I doubt it. You know, Jerry Jones got money longer than Shaq feet and he got a whole bunch of lawyers and stuff that's working on that. But that's a whole nother conversation there. So what I'm saying is basically, the sense of urgency is really not like that of those from other organizations and franchises and teams, whereas they got to make sure that they burn the midnight oil. They got to make sure that they are 1000 percent right on this particular move. Hey, if they're going to meet with um, one of the agencies of Michael Parsons or of C.D. Lamb or of Dak Prescott, Todd France, they got to make sure they schmuse them. They got to make sure that, hey, you want any, um, <clears throat> you want water, sparkling water? 
You want some Keegan water? What do you want? Because we're trying to get this deal done before it's too late. But the Jones family got this particular mindset that they have to say, we, we, we don't have to pick up nobody's phone. They got to call us. And if they want to meet us, they're going to have to fly into Dallas. We got two airports and we got a private airport that you can fly in somewhere uh, 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 north of Dallas. You know what I'm saying? So that's just McKinney. Yeah, McKinney got an airport. You know, I ain't no McKinney. That's where the rich folks fly in, McKinney and them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got Love Field. They got DFW. And they got the McKinney. They got the private airport thing. And then they'll do like this. We'll wait. We'll we will flat out wait. So it's, it's a cons and pros with that. It's a hey, I'm big dog over here with that. You know, yeah, you know, it, it's the L A W approach. Long ass wood. Oops, wrong show. But hey, it's one of those approach. I got the wood over here. L A W. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, nobody got. Look, 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 look. She coming back. I'm L A W over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how it is. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, that can come back to bite you because overconfidence sometimes can be like, well, hey, we were going to give you a situation, but you told me that we got to call you. You need us at this point. So therefore, hey, Addison Airport, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Love Field, all of those things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Trunk back lover. <laughs> well, uh, you know, the cap cap bump obviously, uh, you know, <clears throat> helps in some ways, but all 32 teams get a cap bump. So uh, we all know what, uh, you know, what that can mean as well in terms of, you know, the price of doing business uh, with whatever situation you're working on. You paid a lot of receivers, you guys that own the team. <laughs> CD, how special is it when you want to get a guy like you, that you care about signing? Well, it's always great to have players that you want to, uh, you know, sign to a second contract. And, uh, certainly he fits in that in spades in terms of, you know, a guy that we want to have around here. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's tough to find guys like that. As we all know, you can only have so many of those guys, too, uh, you know, that you pay a second contract to. We've had a lot of, you know, players over the years that when you, uh, you know, when they're available for a second contract, we want them. Uh, but you got to fit everybody in under a salary cap. So that makes it uh, certainly a challenge. But uh, I certainly see these one where we're going to figure out how to make it work. Yeah, well, 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 well. You, 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 in, in micros of this, you, you got to have the sense of urgency. We've seen this play out with Dak. Right. You, you hold on to that situation and then golf get paid. And then I believe Carson Wentz get paid. Right. What it is. You got to get in front of this. Before Jamar Chase. D d not Jamar, Jamar Chase got paid already, did he? He had to get paid. Jamar Chase got paid already, did he? Y'all help me out. It's Jay Jetta that, they, that didn't get paid, right? You want to get in front of this before Jay Jetta, and that's Justin Jefferson. Y'all help me out. Did Jamar get paid already? Y'all help me out. But the longer you wait, the more money. Oh, so all of those boys haven't got paid yet. And out of all of them, out of all of them, C.D. Lamb is up front. He's the first one. So what I'm saying is, and I'm not trying to count, you know, any of these guys' money. Uh, he's still on a rookie's contract. Appreciate you because Jamar came after the year after. He came a year after uh, C.D. Lamb, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh, and then they got issues too because they went on ahead and they franchise tag T. Higgins. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 neither here nor there. When you are like this in this situation, you got to pay first. You got to hurry up and get it in there. Now, granted, I, I would I would give them flowers when it's necessary, and I'm gonna give them some flowers on this contract. <laughs> you know where is that? Come on, where we at? Yeah, here we go. Right, right, right. I want my flowers while I'm living. 
the way they worked that Trey Von Diggs contract, salute to them. Salute to them. They 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 paid at least seven to ten million dollars cheaper than on the life of the contract than the Denzel Ward and all of those boys. So yeah, 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 yeah. So so salute to them on, on how they were able to slide in to get that contract, right? And then, you know, crazy how the football world works, he gets hurt, you know, and that's kind of like, damn. And when we look at this team, man, we was looking special during the uh, – damn, we was looking special during the uh, – uh, what was it was? The uh, off season. we were looking really special, man. I think Trayvon Diggs would have had a real special year. But that's a whole other conversation. And the most people were saying that Trayvon Diggs was the uh, quote-unquote uh, defensive leader on this team. Believe it or not, he, he was the one that at least we saw him get into the face of the quarterback, right? We saw him get in the face of his other defensive players, the, the ones that was on the team. So, yeah, 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 I, I, I would give them a little bit of that. And we can't wait to see Trayvon Diggs back out there on the field, right? Um, and I'm quite sure, I'm quite sure now that we look back at the playoff game, and I'm not using this as an excuse to say Trayvon Diggs the reason why X, X, Y, and Z and all this stuff. But I'm quite sure one of those balls would have been tipped or picked or something, you know, if Trayvon Diggs was out there. But neither here nor there. Um, let me see if I can get this um, this part down. I want to talk about, appreciate all of y'all for tuning in. Uh, Did he talk about this yet? Here we go. What do you look at your team needs? I mean, first of all, you want the right kind of guy in the building. A guy who's very competitive, a guy who's, uh, you know, is all about. Who remember that? Hello, Ruwai, one more time. Uh, the way Mike managed uh, him and some of the older guys, I think we had success with that. Uh, whether it be a Zach Martin, whether, you know, any of the older guys, I think it, uh, you know, helped them out. Right and, kind uh, of guy. Uh, certainly, you know, at the same time, Tyron's missed games. He missed a few last year, but uh, we'll certainly be sitting down with him and uh, looking at uh, what it looks like for him to stay here. What are your? You look at we're at the combine. I've been looking at college prospects. What are your needs as far as what do, what do you look at these college guys and what do you need? What do you? What do you need? Needs? I mean, first of all, you want the right, the right kind, kind of guy, of guy. In the building. A yeah, guy who's very competitive. A guy who's, uh, you know, is all about football, if you will. Right. I mean, we all understand faith and family as well, but uh, football's got to be important to them. And then, you know, we just, uh, you know, look for a guy who's going to really help take this team uh, to the next level. And uh, certainly we'll be spending a lot of time on that and trying to, uh, you know, make sure when we're uh, picking a player that he fits, you know, those things. And, you know, we certainly have obvious needs, uh, you know, on both defense and offense that we'll need to uh, to look at. Uh, with That's why I say, you know, and we, W-L-O-G, we like our guys or, you know, right kind of guys. And he sounds just like Jason Garrett on that particular portion right there. And I'm just going to say this. If you are Mike McCarthy and if you are Mike Zimp, because both of those boys got one-year deals, one-year rental, rental center, they got to be saying, F those picks, man. You know, we need to figure out a way to win now, <laughs> you know, and that could be the thing for this team, right? They got to be saying, if this is a situation, this is a win now mode for me, I can't be sitting back waiting for a guy for the year 2026 or for the year 2027 to turn around and give us something. It got to be right now and yes byron yeah yeah bpa yes indeed you got to go and get your need valuations in the free agency the problem is with the conundrum is that you don't have the cash we are a negative nine million dollars in the hole right now and i know we can push this money around here and move that money around there but you, my friends, are going to have to do something now. Now, here's what's going to happen. And this is how they can play this out. Because this dude, look at his face. Look at the countenance on his face. Because ultimately, nothing, nothing get this man 
uh, up to the greatest mindset of thinking until we get into the draft because he values draft, undrafted, and then he values free agents and trade acquisitions. That's how Stephen Jones think. And we have 20 years of experiences on this. So in his, yeah, yeah, we still $9 million in the hole. <laughs> um, so in his value point, it said again, drafted players, undrafted players, your free agent guys, and then your, your trade pieces or what have you. And trade pieces could be right above the free agent guys, you know. But, you know, let's listen. Guys who are going to be free agents, obviously, Tyron and Baidaz. And, uh, you know, you got guys who are uh, going to be free on that side. Uh, obviously, the linebacking situation, we got a little thin there. Uh, you know, what Mike's vision is for Micah. Is he a true, you know, pass rusher most of the time? Look at a smirk. Got some, you know, last year he ended up, that's pretty much what he did. And I think... You know, very effective, but I think it hurt us with our linebacker depth because we were thinking, of, you know, he was going to do. Why were he the only one chuckling? You know, everybody was like, yeah, no, yeah. He was like, hey, it hurt us. It hurt us at our linebacker's depth. Who's in control of personnel, dog? <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Um, I can't wait to see this season how it, how it folds, right? Into a great situation. I'm, I'm still optimistic, believe it or not, even on one year contracts. Hmm. Let me see what we got here. Do more linebacking, but you know, I think between the linebacker situation and you know, obviously we're we're still working, work in progress on getting better against the run. How difficult is it to formulate a full draft strategy? I think it's the same every year. I mean, you're obviously, uh, you know, going into a draft. You never want to be drafting for need. Um, you want to, you know, be able to scratch those hitches in terms of those needs. Uh, Say it. You know, in ways that, uh, you know, take care of those situations. But, uh, you know, at the same time, you also want to be able to draft guys who, you know, who you can jump in and play. So, you know, there's a fine. That, 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 ain't, that ain't happening, man. If you – if you're talking about drafting guys that go jump in and play, if you didn't solidify your needs, man, they go jump right on in and get ran over. We look. I'm not beating up uh, um, the 49ers, but they went and made acquisition to go get a Javon Hargraves. Because Ken Law still wasn't available for them. They still had weak spots on that particular team from the interior. And they wanted to better their best. Not just say, hey, we're going to plug in a guy that can play immediately and not perform up to those levels. When you look at what the Ravens did from their interior uh, aspect of it, they still put more and more weapons around their drafted players. Fine balance there, but I don't think it's any different than any other year. There's a lot of these positions that need to be filled, but there's also a lot of talent in this combine. Is there a position that you're actually more excited to maybe possibly see? Not necessarily. I mean, it's always good to take it all in. I mean, there are, as you say, there are there are positions where there's a lot more depth, and there's other positions where there's not as much, and certainly that factors in, you know, to how how you allocate your dollars, your resources. Uh, your draft picks uh, that are the priorities, uh, you know, they won't be able to go to the open market this year. So, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be, you know, on this team next year, and that's a great thing. It's, you know, but once guys usually get to this window and they have a chance to be free, uh, you know, usually it's hard to get something done. Not impossible. It gets done. We've done it before. But usually it's real hard to get something done because they do want to see, hey, what situation's out there. Because you don't have to, you can't use the tag on Dak and there's no trade and all that. Do you have to start thinking about the possibility of life without him at all at this point? Yeah, we won't get our whole thing with Dak is him being a cowboy. That's all that's on our mind, and uh, certainly don't get into those type of thoughts. NBA has a NBA has a supermax 
yeah. two players on the team get a lot of money. Would you be opposed <laughs> to that for the NFL? I, I'm not going to get into theoreticals <laughs> today. Yeah. I'll so, pass on that one. <laughs> so, so not timeline-wise, wise, but you do want to extend that? Oh, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. What's your best-case scenario for organization terms of the yeah. cash contract? What do you hope happens there this offseason? You know, like I said, that's just details. I mean, I don't want to get into the details of that. And, uh, you know, we want to be certainly respectful of the negotiation. And, uh, you know, certainly we have our thoughts and our views. But, uh, you know, he's I'm sure Dak and his team have their thoughts and views. And we'll continue to see how we bring those together. Meeting this week with Todd here? In the yeah, like I said, not going to get into any details. On anything when it comes all right, to all right, all right. So far, <clears throat> so far, he, he haven't met with Todd yet, and and um, like I said, here's where I, here's where I ultimately stand with 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 the Dak Prescott fiasco thing. If you're not willing to go all in. With the contract thing, don't fiddle fat around with us, man. I would, I would rather for the Jones family to say, "Hey, man, look, man, we had to, drafted this guy. He he went beyond the expectations of what we thought that we was going to get out of him. Uh, he he's an unbelievable guy. As far as the uh, franchise, we love him uh, as a person, a human being. He went through trials and tribulations, but at this point, put the butt in there. But at this point." We think that right now it will be better for us to see another quarterback, right, to see what we can get out of it and just get get done with it. Don't be dragging this thing along, you know, and still looking for a different situation. That's how I see it. You know, don't don't lie to Lou Kane it, you know. But if you all in and you can tell when somebody is all in, have some kids, man, around the Christmas tree when present's time to be opened up. They they going to rip through it. They ain't going to be just sitting there saying, ah, man, I'm just going to wait for the presents to open themselves. No, they're going to bust them papers open. They're going to do anything and everything to see what they got. And when if you are all in with your said quarterback, you would have been able to get this thing done last year. You know what I'm saying? You would have been saying, like, you know what? I'm not finna drag you until you get to the end of life of your contract because we all know in business 101, the end of life of contracts are always the most difficult ones. We've been, I know they billionaire, they had to have multitudes of contracts before. And it's better to re up a contract a year early versus a year too late. And especially two years because you get the discount stuff, parts of it, you know. But they had their reservation. It is written all over the wall that they got their biggest and the biggest of the biggest reservations. Period. Right? Fellas, fellas know, right? You see that you see that sweet thing that you want to jump the broom with? You ain't finna drag your foot along all year. You ain't finna pay. Nah, yeah, you know, you're going to jump in. I seen one guy, he got down on two knees to make sure he he proposed to her. But he ain't finna mope around and drag around. No, 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 no. Shout out to you, Regina. Yes, indeed. And the ladies know, too. Yes, indeed. The ladies know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He opened the door for me. Oh, yeah. He fixed me breakfast in bed. I'll be your fool. <laughs> hey, hey. Yes, indeed. Yeah, yeah. But when there's a prenup, though, oh, I got real. <laughs> yeah, you have your reservations, man. You know. Yes, indeed, man. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> Even the creator don't want you to be lukewarm. <laughs> hey, either you all in or you gonna put yeah, hey, whoever ran the bath water and they said, okay, let me just put my toe in there. Ha! Hot. Just get on in there, man. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, Ron says uh, all in really means all out. Once you're in, you in, out, out. <laughs> but one of the fellas they know, 
that when Ashanique was getting married and they've been dating Kiki for a long time, and then she fool around and go to that wedding, and y'all been dating for like three or four years, and you're not all the way in. And then she fool around and catch the bouquet. You sitting there like, God dang. <laughs> Kiki go be like, hey, I want what Ashaniqua got. I, I want the, I want, but I wanted to be better. I wanted to be bigger. Mm-hmm. I want the princess cut. I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I want this same venue, but I want it to be more. And that's collectively on a smaller level of how this is all going down right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to be committed to your commitment. Ain't that right, Lisa? Lisa, know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, Lisa know when it's time for her to get her pay raise or her pay grade increase or what have you. She's been putting in that great work and that great time. And you just sitting there knowing that when they hand out those bonuses and they finna hand out that pay increase and you've been putting in your work, you ain't finna sit there and be like, hey, I'm going to let someone who came in behind me get more no no mm, 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 mm. i'm uh, look i want i want i want mines right now hey for that unit i had no problems well, it was no problems when y'all wanted me to check in at two or three o'clock in the morning nope i want my crate <laughs> no where is that <laughs> have that begun not gonna get into any details. <laughs> are y'all done i'm no, not done <laughs> <laughs> What's he missing and what's different about not having a head coach? Yeah, I mean, you know, this day and time, there's, a, you know, you see more and more, uh, you know, coaches who are, you know, are really focused on, uh, you know, install and, and, and what we're going to do next year. Certainly Zim the same way on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, we can get all the work done. He can get all the work done. Right, they can right, Zoom right. and hear these interviews. Uh, certainly I think I find myself watching the TV more so than I do what's going on on the field because you can see them closer. And uh, so I don't think they're missing anything. I think it's just fine that they're doing what they're doing and they're prioritizing, you know, their installs, uh, both mics are, if you will, uh, and, you know, prioritizing that over being here. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Tasha said Asha Nikwa is a paid actor. You know, hey, I'm just saying, though, but Kiki is sitting there like, I want what Asha Nikwa getting right now. <laughs> That's why that song came out. Kiki, do you love me? <laughs> Are you riding? <laughs> oh my gosh, man. Oh my God. I'm just I'm just waiting for the day, man, for all of this to be done with, you know, so we can move on. Whether just just come on, just go ahead and and just, just just release the hounds, you know, whether or not Dak Prescott is going to be here for four or five more years and or whether or not he's going to be here for this final year, man. I, <laughs> yes, indeed, Kiki and them. Yes, indeed. Kiki, like, Kiki watching the channel right now like, hey, wait a minute now. Oh, so that's how you feel? I wish I had that boss drop. Oh, hell no. <laughs> yeah. It's an evil world we live in. All right, all right. So let's go to the 19 minute marker. He says evaluating personnel. Let's go to this part right here. Than that from a personnel standpoint, obviously you drafted Zeke really high. Um, is it free agency? Made him take his glasses round, off. <laughs> high round, like how do you kind of look at? I think it's a, the, everything. I mean, I think we have to continue to look at uh, you know our schemes and what we're doing there. I know Mike uh, certainly. You know, he's a, as you well know, when you talk to Mike, he wants to run the football well. He think that's, you know, at the end of the day, thinks, you know, that's very important uh, part of the offense is to be able to run it effectively. And so then you're looking at, uh, you know, how we do that, you know, how we coach it up. And you're looking at the players, uh, the personnel, uh, the whole nine yards. So uh, I don't think it's any one thing. I think you got to look at the, you know, look at it holistically and then come back and say, here's, here are the changes we're going to make to be better. Mike has said he wanted, Mike has, at the end of the season, Mike had said, we need some thumpers at linebacker, bigger guys. Mm -hmm. When we look back on the season, what are your thoughts about the linebacker position? <laughs> well, I think when you, you know, when we move Bell down, down there, you've got a, you know, a player that started as a safety playing linebacker. So uh, there's no question uh, losing Layton was a, you know, that was a, a difference maker in terms of, uh, what he was bringing to the table in terms of his size and length 
and uh, you know I think that's a very fair statement that we can be more physical and uh, need more uh, size at that position. I think Mike Zimmer, you know, when he talks, I'm sure he's going to echo those thoughts too. He wants more size there, and that's that, that what she said. I had to throw that one in. <laughs> I get it, man. I love Leighton Van Der Esch, man. He's a, he's a real cool guy, man. I love Mama Van Der Esch. I, I love Daddy Van Der Esch. They, they, they are nice Van Der Esch family. And um, ain't nobody on this football field in the last, what, four or five years said, hey, man, you better watch out for 55, man. He laying the wood over there, dog. 55, man, we come down, you better watch out. Look. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm not beating up Van Der Esch because in that playoff game, he did play pretty solid in 2021 against those uh, Niner boys. But correct me if I'm wrong. Give me a yes or a no. Did Van Der Esch play week three Dallas Cowboys versus the Arizona Cardinals? And how much – and somebody put down the yardage – that the courts were able to run on us. And Van Der Esch did play in that game. And let me know, was he healthy at that time? Was his neck, you know, was his back, his head, shoulders, knees, and toes? Was they all together, eyes in, ears, mouth, and nose? Was all of those things put together in week three? Because I need to know from a linebacker's perspective, was he out there? the size, the length, and all of the stuff that John Stephen Jones is saying right now. I thought I thought he didn't get hurt until week five. So he got hurt. He was hurt week three and week five. And Leighton Van Der Esch is a run stopper as it relates to a linebacker. I need to know, man. I, hey, I, I just need to find out, man, what year was it that, that this LVE? Now, 2018, I get all of that. He was phenomenal. Everybody was wolf howling and everything. Had Peter to come out and reach out to me and said, hey, we hope that you are not hurting wolves over here. And I said, no, no wolves were hurt during this episode. I had to put a disclaimer on some of my videos. So, y'all is with the belief, and Ricky, shout out to you. He said he got hurt in preseason. So, LVE wasn't here week three when we played against the Cards. I thought for sure I saw 55 out there, bro. Physicality there, and, uh, I mean, I think Bell was outstanding, but he is, you know, he, he, he was a safety when he started <laughs> the season. So, uh, and then, you know, in general, that was our scheme. You know, a more of a three safety, two linebacker scheme than we were a three linebacker, two safety scheme. So, you know, I think those are all things that, you know, Mike's going to get in there and we're going to look at and we'll come up with a good solution that we think will make us better against the run. I mean, obviously running the football and stopping the run are at the top of our list uh, this offseason. All right. So I, I, I pulled up week three. The final score was 16 to 28. Your leading tackler in that game was Damone Clark with 10 total tackles, seven solos. And I'm looking down here, I'm seeing Leighton Vanderesh with three total tackles, one solo. And that's it. He played week three. Matter of fact, in that game, Jordan Lewis, Stephon Gilmore, Jonathan Hankins had more tackles than him. Donovan Wilson, Parsons, Malik Hooker, D Law. Bland and Kurtz had all more tackles than him. They completed that particular game with 63 tackles. And from a linebacker perspective, he only had three. Linebackers should, and that's the operative word, have the bulk of your tackles. Let me say this again. Linebackers should have the bulk of your tackles. Now, get it. I get it. It could be scheme, and LVE could have been such a great opposition, right, right, for, for, for the opposing team that they ran away from him, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that could be the situation there. I'm just saying. <laughs> but they finished out that game with over 222 yards collectively in that game. 
and and proof, truth be told, we couldn't stop a nosebleed. Yeah. <laughs> well, we all know what we think of Jimmy. Uh, certainly it was great to get him uh, in the ring of honor. Uh, and he's certainly a guy uh, that Jerry respects his opinion. I respect his opinion. Uh, the success he had here with the Cowboys is undeniable. Uh, that's why he's in the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's why he's in the ring of honor. Not just what he's done for us, but, you know, as a coach in general. So, uh, uh, you know, I know Jerry picks up the phone and likes to – uh, talk to a lot of folks that he respects. I mean, he used to talk to John Madden as well. So uh, I think he's, uh, you know, certainly somebody it's always great to bounce something off of. But you try to keep Tyler Smith at that guard? You know, that's, uh, you know, remains to be seen. I mean, it's starting to feel like Larry Allen uh, all over again. I mean, right, he, right, right, right. The great thing about Tyler is his versatility. He could be a great left tackle too. I mean, Larry Allen, I think, played either one or one and a half or two years at Left tackle, I think he made all pro those years too. So uh, he can, uh, Tyler's got that in it. And, you know, I think at the end of the day when we're, you know, all through massaging it, we'll have a good spot for him. And the great news is we have Tyler Smith. And uh, his mm -hmm. versatility certainly brings options uh, to the table in terms of how we look at this team uh, as we move forward. With Trayvon Diggs and Marty and Overshawn, where they are with their recovery, is it realistic to see them do any sort of work by OTA time or is it more realistic for I think it's more realistic for camp when you look at the injuries, uh, you know, that they had. You know, they're going to be out there working, but uh, you know, to actually be participating in team activities is probably a reach. But uh, they're certainly coming along great. The great news on, on both those injuries, if there can ever be good news on an ACL, is they were done early. But do you, do you want to bring Gilmore back, and what does that mean for Bland if you do? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, uh -huh. you know, those are all things that we're going to be discussing. And true. It's all true. about the business and how the overall picture looks uh, as to who. Shout out know, to Jabari. Exactly Showtime. We're going to bring back. Obviously, Stefan Gilmore was a great addition for us last year. Not only is he a great football player, he's a first class act. And uh, we're very pleased uh, with what he did, uh, you know, for this team and uh, have nothing but respect for him. How do you look at the wide receiver position behind CD with Gallup and the year that he had and then Cooks? And then how does like I said, we're not going to get into the details of, you know, where we're going to go. We feel good about that position, though. Uh, I thought Tolbert had a real breakout year uh, in terms of uh, what he did for us. Uh, certainly Brooks did a lot of good things. We had him active, and I know Dak was comfortable with him uh, as a receiver. And so, uh, you know, feel good about that position. Obviously, Cooks is just like Stefan. He not only was a great player and good for us on the field, but what he brought off the field, his leadership, his veteran leadership was uh, undeniable and uh, thought he was outstanding. And then you certainly had CD, so it's a good group. I think the Saints are going to be practicing out in Southern California. Yeah, so uh, that, that's the end of that interview there. Man, if you guys want to uh, listen to the full interview, be sure to uh, click this link right here. You can uh, follow the full interview uh, in the comments section. On that interview, I got clip notes of like timestamps of where to go to, where we listened to today. And you can uh, thumb around instead of listening to the full 25 minutes of that interview. Uh, Lil Bill, appreciate you for the uh, $5 support. We really thank you over here. What do you think about Mike Zimmer signing a one year deal? Sorry, I may be late. Uh, <clears throat> I think that that was out of respect to Mike McCarthy. You don't ever want someone that's your subordinate, you know, or someone beneath or, or, or under you with a longer contract than you. Even in school systems throughout the state of Texas, I know for sure in the state of Mississippi, that the principal must be the highest paid staff member and let me know if that's still the uh, the uh, principles there, right? Uh, in in the state of Texas, if you are a principal watching this or what have you, must be a the highest paid, you know. So no one else, and it's a power struggle, of course. So you you also want to have your contract to marry up with your your people on your staff, you know. You never want someone one foot in with a hidden promise that hey they're gonna get this job down the stretch. 
and to a degree, and I'm not being, you know, conspiracy law. I, I just think that ultimately the way Dan Quinn moved around, he either had the Cowboys at his heart that he wanted to be the head coach of Seattle and then Washington. I think Washington was his last fit. And the Washington team had the hearts and minds to have the Johnson kid, who was the offensive coordinator, there uh, in Detroit as their head coach. So, you know, sometimes you just got to get in where you fit in at, and that's how I look at it. Um, <clears throat> Ricky says, Van Der Esch have cervical spine, and was his diagnosed in 2019 and had surgery in 2020, so his mobility is limited. Maybe that's why his play is down. Yeah. And, and, and Ricky, I, you know, hats off to Leighton Van Der Esch for playing with those injuries. Right? And everyone have a reason, but results are what matter. They are not finna give us a pass for that, right? They're not finna give us a pass, but they're not finna give us extra credit work for, for playing a guy, you know, who had the cervical, uh, spinal, you know, uh, injury and, and, and had surgery or what have you, because at the end of the day, nobody cares, you know, it is a sad story for right now. And they say, all right, cool. You know, these guys are multi-millionaires. They want production. They want results. And the Jones family, they got to look at it that way. You know, if all a few people, People that bashing that, they don't care about that man don't have his mama out there. They don't care about that, what household he grew up in. You know, they don't care about that. You know, they don't care about what round he was drafted in or how his leg, he was trying to put his bone together on his foot. Mm -mm. You know, his, his broken thumb. ESPN don't even mention it, right? They just say, hey, hey, man, this dude led the league. And he didn't even, the year that, that people said that he led the league in turnovers or interceptions, he didn't even lead the league in, in interceptions. But it sound good coming off the tongue, right? So nobody cares about that, right? Nobody cares about Pat Mahomes, who grew up in a multi-million dollar lifestyle, bro. His mom, his, I think Pat, Pat Mahomes' daddy had money, even though he had DUI. They, nobody going to talk about that. But, you know, his daddy was rich. So all of the camps, all of the better schools, hey, he didn't live out of nobody's trailer. Nobody going to bring up the small things that get you ahead of life. They going to look at for where you are at now and what can you do for me now. And that's just how it goes. Uh, Duncan Wright says, let us Eagles, <laughs> you can have a great player and coach, but if Jerry and Sariani stay, say, stay, is that stay nothing going to change in Eagles and Cowboys? What's your view? Let me read that again. My hooked on funny eyes are not working that well. You said, let us Eagles, like us Eagles, you can have a great player and coach. But if Jerry and Sariana stay, nothing going to change. And Eagles and Cowboys, what's your view? Um, you guys were a fumble away for winning the Super Bowl. You guys were a, what's that guy named? Kadarius Tony. Return away from winning the Super Bowl. Because I'm quite sure if Kadarius Tony didn't have that big play in that, in that Super Bowl, right, that, that you guys probably would have won it, right? So it, it, it's one of those things when you look at it like that. Football, and I get it, Sariani, if anything – you can see the value of the other coaching staff that he had. What's the kid that, that went over to the Colts, I believe, that was calling the plays or what have you? Now you see how valuable he was. Now you see how, you know, Gannon uh, defense, even though I don't, I'm not saying that he was the better defensive coordinator than what I had last year, but he was better, <laughs> you know. So you see how much value a coaching staff is. 
right? I'm quite sure that if you guys picked up Dan Quinn instead of Gannon as your defensive coordinator that year, you guys probably would have won it, you know. But that's just how it is. Coaching matter. General managers matter. The upper bulb matter. But you got to have players in there to get things going. That's my measured conversation piece on the Eagles. Jerry Jones, and I'm trying to tell Cowboy fans, it's not like we need the whole entire world. We need run game, and we need to stop the run. We need a system put into place, and we've seen some of that. We've seen Dak Prescott on the MVP type of run. So to a degree, yes, Jerry is not all the way at fault with all of this, but he's the one holding the gun. <laughs> you know, he's the one holding the gun, and somehow it went off. You got to pull the trigger, whether or not you got to move your son out of the way and say, hey, we got an LVE, man, with a tender neck over here. We can't, look, look we got away with winning a few games with Marquise Bell, who's a HBCU all-star superstar, undrafted guy. But some at some point in time, that check engine light is on. That low pri- that lo- that low pressure light on your car is on. And one thing I know about life, when it breaks down, it always breaks down at the wrong time. It breaks down at the wrong time. There's somebody right now riding around with the check engine light on, riding around with low oil, you know, or riding around with an oil pan to just leak it. Every time you park your car, you get into your car, you got a pool a pool of oil. And instead of fixing the oil pan, you just say, hey, I'm just going to buy more oil. And everywhere you go, you just leaking oil everywhere. Don't park in my house. We're going to throw them hands, man. I want a clean community over here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not part of the HOA, but I will. I will say, hey, man, park down the street with that. But there are some people that operates and think like that. And say it's okay. And then one day they forgot to get that quart of oil and they riding down a highway and all of a sudden they call Harlem shaking. JC Cowboy Network says, keep up the great work, my brother. Appreciate you, my brother, man. We're going to have to do a show, man, before the draft kick off, man. I got to get your thoughts on everything. So uh, hit me up, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me find my horn for you. <laughs> I'm looking for my horn. What about horn? There we go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so 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 Jerry Jones, so Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, if they are part of the personnel in Will McClay. Somebody had to see that. Somebody had to advise that saying that, hey, from all personnel, and I, and I love what uh, Nick Saban said, it, that, hey, even though you may still have to have your nickel packages, but let's not forget about your big boy packages. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing what he's saying, that you still need to make sure that you have your personnel packages. So when you plan against run heavy teams, you would have the ability to make the necessary adjustments. Football is about adjustments. And if you don't make the adjustments, they would take advantage of you. Shout out to you, Leon. Thank you so much for jumping in. Shout out to you, Toxic. Appreciate you. Uh, Taylor, appreciate you. Uh, all right, so it's 133. Let's open up the phone line. Appreciate y'all, man. Antron says, uh, thanks, Law. That remind me that I need to go get my oil changed after work today. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, and my birthday is in February, so my car registration is in February. And even though, you know, you still got to get, you still got to take care of business is what I'm saying. Right? Everything is not automation, you know. I still had to go get my tag stuff information. Still had to make sure I'm registered. Right? Because if the authorities pull me over in March and my stuff said it expired in February, 
I can say, hey, man, I got busy, man. I was working, man, you know. Can you can you get, hey, it's still March, man. It ain't like it's like, you know, April or May. Can you give me a slide? Can you make me slide on this one, man, you know? No, you take care of business. Get that registration done. But some people, and look, it was the 29th. If it wasn't for a leap year, I would have been late, right? But there's no excuses. <laughs> I got it done on today. You know, that's what I did this morning. I made sure that I got my registrations done. Yeah, yeah, don't get Richard Sherman. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. You got to make sure that you got things in order. All right, before I um, open up the phone line, let me let me play this look thing right quick uh, just to uh, entice the conversation to spice it up just a little bit man sometimes you need a little spices y'all okay y'all not going anywhere you know what I'm saying? it's a beautiful thursday and uh let's see what we got here let's see what we got here let's see what we got here bear, bear with me hell mary because i want i want to talk about this point right here and this is from the uh I gotta make sure. Right. Here we go. Where, where in the hell are you? Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought for sure. Oh, hold on. My bad, y'all. Charge it to my head, not my heart. Boom, y'all. Okay, hold on. Let me go put some cover over it, though, just in case. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on with it, baby. Y'all hear that? Mm hmm. Yeah. Come on with it. Here we go. Build a plane as we fly. Here we go. Boom. Pull yeah. the plug on a guy yeah. that was just in the MVP conversation. Yeah. So that's what I said because he so did it again. They, so should Buffalo pull the plug? Okay, what, what's your priority should Buffalo here? pull the plug on Josh Allen? What's your goal? Should <laughs> Buffalo pull the plug Get on him. Josh Allen? Don't throw your hands up. Give me an answer. I know, but we're not talking about Josh Allen. I'm talking about a quarterback. (laughs) Should they pull the plug? I'll take Josh Allen over Dak Prescott. That's not what I asked you. I'll take it. No, they should not, because I'll take him. (laughs) They should not. Do you think Buffalo would trade Josh for Dak? That's a simple question. No, I'm turning it it back on you. Hey. (laughs) That boy said, no. (laughs) Keys got him, man. Hey. He said, should they pull the plug? <laughs> should they pull the plug on Josh Allen? And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. Let's listen to more of this crap. <laughs> Stop for me yeah. for one second. You said no. They shouldn't, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. But the Dallas but he's Cow- better than Dak Prescott. So why would you pull the plug on you him? You lean the league since you've been in the league in total turnovers, but he's better than Dak Prescott. Yeah, he is. He's just more talented than Dak Prescott. All right. Josh Allen. We we all like Josh Allen. We we all like the gunslinger mentality. We love the strong arm, you know, and the athleticism. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's not about the whole argument is not about who's better. He's presenting his argument as would you pull the plug? Josh Allen is already cemented in with his team. And that's what most of the Cowboys fans that kind of like in the odd spot with Dak Prescott. Y'all thinking that, hey, Josh Allen is a free agent. Burroughs is a free agent. Mahomes is a free agent. Those boys are already signed with their team. They got their quarterback. Hands down, Dan Marino is probably one of the better quarterbacks during that time frame that even Troy Aikman was here. Yes, we probably would have been a better team with Dan Marino. But we got our quarterback. Dan Marino didn't have our system. Jim Kelly, I want y'all to pull up Jim Kelly's numbers. They are spectacular. Spectacular. 
But to make the argument a circular argument, it's equivalent to Miami Dolphins fans saying, hey, give us Troy Aikman, man. Dan Marino can't win the big games. It's equivalent to Bills fans saying, give us Troy Aikman, man. Jim Kelly can't win us games. To slam dunk this argument with the belief systems that I'm telling y'all right now, if you pick Dan Marino up and put him on the 90s Cowboys, would we still been able to win Super Bowls? The answer to that is yes. If you pick Jim Kelly up and put him on this particular team, would they would have been still able to win Super Bowl. Yes, if you still have the coaching intact with the philosophies and the principles and on top of that with the host of weapons of like what we had with Emmett, the playmaker, Charles Haley and all of those boys. That's why you can't make football an isolated situation. Okay. And he played pretty well against what Patrick the hell Mahomes. has I thought he, he won. outplayed Patrick What Mahomes. the hell has he won? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. I but you up. trying to tell me all I'm trying to do is I'll compare. All I'm trying to do is compare who, the two who's quarterbacks. Better? Who's better? Josh Allen or Dak Preston? I think about the same to me. They're not the same. Oh, for real? For real. Why? Because Josh thinking, Allen runs the football a little yeah, bit better? A lot better. A lot better. You yeah. can say a lot, I say a little. They, they Dak Prescott does not turn the football over nowhere near. The uh, rate that Josh hmm, Allen does. Ago, Skip, he did lead the league in interceptions. Uh, he led the league in interceptions that one year. Okay? He had a bad stretch run where he turned it over a lot. Prior to that, no. Post <laughs> that, no. Don't do this, Skip. Okay, Who are well, you going to get? Okay, your goal is to have the Cowboys be mediocre. <laughs> My goal is for them to actually go win a Super Bowl. I right? don't give a blank mm -hmm. about what the Cowboys do. Because as I tell you, I told Michael, I'll tell you again. Oh, 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 for that person who said, you know, <laughs> who would have had more interceptions, I want y'all to pull up Troy Aikman interception ratio compared to Jim Kelly. Yeah, you know, go ahead and do that homework for me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Listen, 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 listen to this dude, though. I'll but be in I'm not saying that Jim Kelly is light years ahead of Troy, though. By the way, you know, I, I always I always tell people to me, to me, Troy is my favorite Dallas Cowboys quarterback of all time. That's just to me, but neither here nor there. New Orleans, regardless if the Cowboys get there or not, I'm just trying to get you to realize and understand you got a quarterback that you talking about they should get rid of mm -hmm. and move on from, mm -hmm. but you ain't giving me no answers to the replacement. <laughs> So the argument was with my guy is saying, give me the answers to the replacement. Who are you replacing? Who are you putting in instead of? Let's open up the phone lines brought to you by prize picks. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Let me get my music going. Appreciate y'all, man. Oh, I love y'all, man. I love y'all so much, man. But I don't make the rules. We just, we just, we just. I ran up a check, I might do it again. Might do it Enemies again. Enemies close, have me thinking they're friends. Ten Yo. toes down, I'll Ten be feeding to down. the end. Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my ass. Took so many years, Booyah. I'm just waiting for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up. Bank roll, bank roll. Yo. Yeah, TC on the drums. Now, interception ratio is not prepared or compared to those type of things. Look at touchdown. It's touchdown to interception ratio. So pull up Troy Aikman touchdowns to interception ratio to Jim Kelly's touchdown to interception ratio. And that's how you get the interception ratio, you know. That's how you get that. But I, I feel what you're saying. And then you go with passing attempts and yards and all of that and the number of seasons and the number of games. If my memory serves me correct, I think Troy played a total of 94 games in his career. 
so you can tie it up. Come on. All that other bull, it don't matter much. You only climb me, I put the ladders up. No fault. I done doubled up on yeah. the workload. Come on. I think I fell in love with the bankroll. Pray up, get money, then we lay low. Then we lay low. Come on, baby. I got my guy over here from the 614. We got Noop in the house. What's good with you, Noop? What's say, Law? Nothing much, man. How you living, bro? Oh, I'm living pretty good, Law. Living yeah. pretty good. Man, that's good Thank to you hear. Since we, since we giving these religious uh, <laughs> analogies, like purgatory and all this. Purgatory, here, oh, yeah, man. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. These Joneses, they ain't nothing but some prosperity preachers. Okay. <laughs> I need you to follow me. They pouring syrup all over the Bible, huh? They they throwing, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, 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 yeah. They 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 give, they, they actually give, give tithes and offerings so they could give it to God. And and the minute the congregation need money, they gonna tell you to pray and hope. <laughs> pray and hope, you know, pray through. They gonna tell you to pray and hope while they building their castles and got their yacht and building stuff for their for their future. <laughs> That's what Come it out is, the man. <laughs> we been swallowed. <laughs> Come out the closet. <laughs> we got a mega. We got a mega church over there. <laughs> we got to say, not all, not all, but most. That's all they doing, Lord. They Prosperity. selling us hope. Hey, they, they got the prayer cloth. Hope. They got the prayer cloth. They hitting people they with it. Got, they got the all. They doing all, all on your forehead. Talking about you finna go to heaven. <laughs> you know why? We got to die to go to heaven. They got, they got their heaven right here on earth, law. <laughs> we been bamboos, law. Yeah, I'm telling you. What's oh going my gosh, on. man! Hey. <laughs> you Come out the closet. <laughs> And I'm a part of it. We all hey man, a part we are, we all part of. It. We just ain't Jim Jones now. We ain't gonna just drink. The, we can just drink that juice now. <laughs> well, we damn near that old law. Oh my god! I'm all on Facebook bragging about my cowboys every year. But uh, law, I'm not a religious person, but I'm right, spiritual. Right. You spiritual? I like I'm not that. Fit, I'm not fitting to give them a, a grunion. Yeah. Cause God don't need no money. Yeah, 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 but, yeah. But, but the fans, but the fans going all in. We spending money and everything like that. But yeah. when we want a Super Bowl, they gonna tell us to have faith and hope. Have faith and hope. You I mean, played, at, at, at this point, you man, played, uh, man, I'm one of the deacons, <laughs> then because I'm trying to have people to have faith, right. man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> you, right. I'm calling right. y'all up. Right. Come on, man. Come on out. Come on out to the games. But I, I, right. I would say this though, bro. I, I'll say this. Um, the the Cowboys to me, to me, uh -huh. we got to catch lightning in the bottle, and I think that that ultimately what happened uh, in two thousand no no two thousand nineteen ninety five we had to catch it. Troy had to realize yeah. and say, hey, we got to win in spite of these coaches. We got people running around here doing their own thing, and I think that since that time frame, mm -hmm. it's been it's been changing into that right whereas people been 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 i guess what you call it pandering right to the coaching or mm -hmm. pandering to the uh to the um to the owners what have you so i i get all of that so ultimately these players got to want it man and uh, uh right. mike mccarthy and mike zim going to have to want it you know, in order to win it all. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's impossible because even in impossible, watch how I flip it around to a, from a negative to a positive, even in impossible, mm -hmm. it states that I'm possible. You know what I'm saying? If you read right, it real right. slowly, so you see what I'm saying, Noop. So all you got to do is <laughs> you just got to sit back and wait, man, and let things just manifest itself into greatness. It's just that we as Cowboy fans, we're sick and tired and we're going to call out some things but we're going to need some movement to happen and it could be one or two pieces that can really change this organization and franchise 
But then being honest about it, it that's like 95% of the league, man. Yeah. A lot of them ain't trying to win no Super Bowl, man. You yeah. know, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, it's just like catching lightning in a bottle. Right. If you win, you win. It ain't it ain't like the good old days when you had powerhouse teams, you know, you 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 damn near know who's gonna be in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl. But it just it's just a it's just a trying to catch lightning in a bottle. But I'm just saying, man, they they profit in off of us. They they do now. Now that's one thing, <laughs> shoot. But they profit in off. But of not us, just them though. Home. But not just them though. ESPN, Fox, oh, all of those boys, Eric, all networks. Us, 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 the little people. <laughs> the little people. Yes, you indeed. Know, the rich keep getting richer and the poor keep getting poor. Man, come That's on. That's my man. analysis, man. We, I'm, I'm conscious. I know you're a little <laughs> conscious, too. <laughs> but, you know, you got to, sometimes you got to dig beneath the surface. Yeah, yeah, but, I, hey, Hey, I can't be too woke though because then they start taking stuff. You know what I'm saying? Down. Right, right, like, right, I, I gotta right, give right, them right, 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 I, I, right, I, I get right yeah, to the door. I'm trying to be careful for what I say, but I know you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know, yeah. I can yeah. tell you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah keep so. up the good work, Lord. You, I, I listen to you all the time, but I just want to give you that analysis because everybody trying to get this religion analysis and everything like that. <laughs> no doubt, man. Yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for calling in. That's that's oh, my hey. guy, man. Uh huh. Um, from the six one four, man. Uh, good call from him. All right. Uh, I have from the two five four. You live on the nation. Brought to you by Prize Picks. You in the mix. Talk to us. Hey, all nation. Hey, what's going on, my guy John? You in the house, man? Talk to us. What's on your heart? I've been trying to get a hold. To just to drop drop on uh on uh, 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 uh-huh. uh yeah. oh. for a couple of weeks. Uh huh. And, 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 and I, I I I don't get your notification. Oh, uh, man, you know how I said, you know, remember we were just talking about, you know, you know, I got to move a certain way. So so maybe they just hating on you, man. You know, some people, most people not getting the notifications, et cetera. But what you have for today, John, what you got for us, man? Um, I, 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 I saw we we making a, a a new coach, Mike Mike Mike, Mike Zim. Zim. Yeah, 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 yeah. N- new old coach. He was here before, and now he's circling the back. So the so hopefully, man. The last time we lifted up a Lombardi Trophy, he was partying with us. So hopefully, he'll bring some of that mojo back over, man. And uh, hopefully, that can happen for us. Huh? How long ago was my number was in the Dark Cowboys? Oh man, this this before you was born. <laughs> it was like ninety four, ninety five season. He was here uh, when we won that uh, Super Bowl, bro, and um, it was one of those things. Whereas, you know, it was very joyous moment for us. Hopefully. Uh, he will bring in some accountability and uh, hold these guys accountable, and we'll see that we can get the thumpers type of linebackers in the house and just be solid on defense again. And then, 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 and I, I I will be moving up the to Dallas and probably in a couple months. Okay, all right. I, 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 I will be right. 
a white, a white, and a body, when he abide the dog scout cowboy stadium. Man, that's going to be dope, John. And, hey, whatever you go to the game, man, we score at least 40 points, and we are undefeated, man. So, hey, hey, see, bring that energy over, man. I appreciate you. Let me hear you say it, John. Let's go, Cowboys. And win, 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 lose a draw. I'm going to be a dark Cowboys fan forever. Yes, indeed. That's my guy, man. John, man. Um, salute to my guy, John. He He's a diehard Cowboy fan. Uh, we had put out funds together uh year before last to get him out to the game, and it was his first experience, and uh, we beat the brakes off the uh, Eagles that, 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 that year, and uh, he was there at the uh, game to experience it all. And, uh, and, uh, and hopefully we will have – uh, my guy right here talking. Get your ass up there, contain the damn ball. This is why we do it. Come on with it. Too many missed tackles. Let's go. We're too damn soft. I just hate mistakes. I hate mistakes. Yeah, that's that's my exam. I'm not saying that he's gonna have that type of fortitude of talking from his vernacular, talking about my exam. But hopefully he will bring in some of that good stuff. Come on, I got the 251, you're live, and then I have VIP next. 251, you're live on The Nation, brought to you by Prize Picks, you in the mix. Talk to me. Turn your radio down, turn your radio down. you live, man, in the background. Turn turn it down. Hey, live, what up, man? Hey, what's, what's good? Going on? All is well, bro. Talk to me, man. Hey, this 55, man, Richburg. Okay. Okay. Man, you keep the good work. Hey, I want to give you some encouragement, man. Keep the good work up, and while you encouraging me, I want to encourage you. Man, I appreciate you, dog. I really do, bro. Really do. Uh-huh. Yeah, I need it. I needed that one today. Yes, indeed. All right, then. Uh-huh. Hey, all I gotta say is, how about them Cowboys, man? Oh, that's hey. it. That's, that's that's all you had today. Hey, hey, yeah. Yeah. come on, man. Hey, I, hey, I love hey, it. When you stay, when you stay close, to, when you stay close to God, He gives you your audio steps. You just have to follow. Yes, indeed, man. I appreciate that, and yeah, all I'll right. follow. Yes, all indeed. Right. Yeah, where He leads me. I will follow, thank you, I'll go with him, with him, all the way. VIP, you live on the nation, man, brought to you by Prize Picks. You in the mix, come on, bro, I haven't heard from you all year, man, talk to me, man. Law is VIP, baby, Yeah. Law. Yeah. Law. Law, <laughs> law, law. I'm, I'm still lurking, law. But you know, I, law, law. I still, I'm still digesting our law, law. I know, I'm man. Still not over our L. Not all of us heal like Wolverine, man. <laughs> man listen, I still have that healing power, law, law. Right, right, right. What hurts me more, law, is to know that we have nepotism. It's like, it's, it's almost like how, how. Uh. how the U.S. denies there was no racism. It's just, it's just like we have a denial that there's no nepotism, there's no favoritism. Look, mm-hmm. Law, until we get out of our own way, I'll right. explain this to my kids, Law. Sometimes our biggest enemy is our inner me. Okay. Let me repeat that in my Dr. Umar. Our <laughs> biggest enemy is our inner me. Our All inner right. me is Jerry. Hey. And until we get to Jerry just over himself, law, like I don't want to spend this off season. I'm not into hypothesis. I'm not. Yeah, look, I'm not yeah. a science major, law. So I'm not into hypothesis, law. I, I need right, something right, right, of right. substance. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to talk about when we're going all in. I'm gonna show you all in, Jerry. See, you're not a big boy, Jerry. You never been all in. You never been deep inside. You know, wait, wait. wife or woman. You know, well, I'm wait a minute. He, 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 he's been deep. He's been knee deep in something. He got to do that DNA test. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he's only thinking deep, Law. I'm talking about big boy status deep, Law. 
When, when you change somebody's thoughts and, and they walk, Lord. Oh, my that's, God. That's what we need, Lord. Oh, my God. We need, <laughs> we need Jake B to stand for something, Lord. <laughs> and I, I don't mean just the D for Dallas, Lord. I mean D for dictatorship, Lord. <laughs> we need some dictatorship going on. <laughs> Well, you wild, boy. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, hey, man. But but what about Stephen Jones, though? You going to let him off the uh, hook, or is it just Jerry? You no, know? no, no, no. Lord, he, he's the biggest problem. Lord, he, the, Mr. Catboy, Mr. Catboy himself. Swallow that. I'm, 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 I'm really thinking about going to visit him in, in, until the offseason stops. Uh-huh. Just, I'm, I'm, me, me and Steve are going to go take a ride. Steve, uh-huh. I need you uh-huh. uh-huh. We're going to go take a ride. We're going to take a ride, and I'm going to show you some real cowboy fanatics. And you're going to have to answer to us because you're, you're the one standing that Jerry wants to spin, but we got the cat boy. No, daddy. Daddy, daddy, we can't do this. Remember last time? Galloway, daddy. Remember, remember, um, um, who else? Uh, oh, number 11 from Detroit, Law. I don't even want to say it. his name. Don't even get credit, Law, because he's still he's a thief. But I still hunt him down, Law. You know who I'm talking about. I ain't even gonna bring his name <laughs> up. But those are the last contracts that we really jumped out the window for, other than the guy that pissed off the tuna, because tuna really didn't want to. That was that was one of tuna's step off. That was one of tuna's. Well, right, I'm right, 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 man. Because I already told you what I want on this team, and and, and, and tuna. That's what tuna. Re- re- Respectfully, Tuno was not happy with that T.O. move. It he was, wasn't. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, 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 let's fast forward, man, to present day, right? All right. So, are you are you with the belief that the Cowboys should extend your guy, or should or are, are you with are you with the belief now that you saying that look, man, that's that's my boy. I just want to see him just be successful now, man, and just release him, man. Look, just let him go somewhere else so he can. Look, so he can go. I'm a realist, law. Okay. And I, it's just to release him. That's the stupidest thing somebody ever said. Okay. I, don't, 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 don't beat me. Damn. Damn. Don't, don't, don't beat me up, VIP. Don't don't beat me down. Now, come on, man. Don't don't beat me up. I'm just saying. I just I just want to see him just just, just do his thing, man. Okay. Okay. Release <laughs> that. Well, what is your answer, Cooper Rush? What is your answer, Law? Man, you're you right. You, yeah. The MVP running, Law. Yeah, you and too. And you want to release him? Yeah. But you want to pick up a quarterback that has double-digit turnovers ever since he's been in the league. Uh-huh. But you want what, Mr. Josh Allen that walks on water leads the quarterbacks in turnovers since he's been in the league. He long. do. His he average do. right yeah. now is 15.5. Yeah, yeah. So what are we replacing my dad? Quite, what are we replacing him with, Law? Trey well, Lance, baby. Like it's it's going to be I'm Trey Lance. It's, 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 it's going it's to be Trey, man. It's going to be Trey Lance, man. Uh, here we go, Lord. Swallow uh, that. Here we go. The chest, the chest, the chest that got beat out by Garoppolo. Look, Law, I'm not even going to get it. I, I like his arm, Law. I know the arm is in the preseason. Right. Everybody's going to be slurpied up. We gonna. I can't wait for slurpy season to stop, Law, because so, where, where is Brandon at? He's probably all slurped out. Oh, oh, they're going to get rid of my – they're probably going to get – Brandon, I, I want to meet you, Brandon, at a preseason. <laughs> where, where, when is this goddamn – when is um, – California start. I want to meet Brandon and Cali. I, I want to have a sit down lunch with him and the rest of the Slurpees. So I can slap out of somebody, or let somebody talk about my quarterback during this season or the off season, and I'm hunting you down. All right, man. That's my guy, man. I ain't no killer, but don't push me. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much for calling in. VIP. Bro, I love you. <laughs> I'm What's here looking, Lord. Ain't no Slurpees allowed where I'm from. Get off <laughs> my block, Slurpees. <laughs> no doubt, man. It's VIP, man. That's the energy, man, that we love to hear. All right, I got the 901. I got the man, the myth, the legend, computer man. And then I have 100 grand with the play. But computer, man, what's good, man? Talk to me, man. Y'all give a big shout out to Long Nature Sports. Hey man, appreciate make sure y'all you. going in cash out, Apple Pay, whatever y'all need, cause that man can't be working for free right here. Hey, I appreciate giving you. y'all excellent content. 
backdoor content. He got insiders. He got my insider. He got the whole hypnotized mind. He think mafia crew. He got the whole music industry behind him. So yeah. Y'all need to make sure y'all need to be breaking him off some money every day, every day. Just like y'all do the St. Jude and the rest of them folks. Yeah. Sure y'all take care of law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, indeed, man. <laughs> I appreciate well, we can, that reigning endorsement. Yeah. We can disappear on y'all. 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 We can disappear Mike McCarthy is the first head coach we done had to the capital that I like. I didn't like Parcell. Parcell didn't come to Dallas and win no championship. Just like Dale Hansen said, Mike, Bill Parcell came to Dallas to get out of debt, and that's what he did. He came there, Jerry gave him all that money, paid off all them bills, all them divorces he had, and got back straight and moved his butt to Miami and got them folks for some money and retired. He ain't done nothing since. Mm. Parcell does not, he does not stick around. When he, when he, when he come and go, it was as he won them couple championships in New York. He got the big head, thought he was better than everybody else. He didn't want to listen to nobody. He wanted to do the way he do it. He didn't want to have us drafting them sorry linebackers like Bobby Carpenter and all them other players, them offensive linemen. Them players, and none them players paying out. Okay, okay. he looked right. up and got um, uh, Where? Mark Taylor and all them. He didn't yeah, pick yeah. them folks. Them folks were there when he got there. So yeah. Come on now. Y'all stop giving folks credit for what they didn't do. That was more belt than it was Parcell. He didn't want to hear that defensive role. The Parcell was going to do him to walk on the side of the line, line cussing and, 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 and spitting in folks' face and punching his quarterback hmm. and offensive coordinator. So y'all need to lay off of him. Y'all need to put that blame where it go at Jerry Jones' feet. Jerry Jones, just like in the Godfather, it all ends with him. That's his son that make those decisions. He reared that boy. He raised that boy. If that boy don't want to listen, that's Jerry's fault. Spare the rod, you spoil the child. Computer! Is this true the first time I'm hearing you call it out, Gerald Wayne Jones? Yes, I have been. I have back there like, like, like Clemenza did the dawn in the Godfather. <laughs> when everybody thought it was Tessio, I always thought it would have been Clemenza with Tessio. You know what uh-huh. I'm saying? Because if you look at the way the man how to be in this, it's not really cool. You know what I'm saying? I mean. The whole thing started with the mess. He got rid of Tom Larry way. He got rid of Tom. Okay. Then he got rid of Jimmy. Then he got rid of Barry. Then he got rid of Chan Gator. Then he had Campo coaching that team with no players on it. Then he bring in Parcell. They let Parcell run things for a little while. Then they leave. Then he bring in uh, Wade. Yep. He bring in Wade Phillips, but he hired Jason Garrett first from Miami because he went down there. Because the problem with the Joneses is is they don't know how to stand on their own two feet. Mm. They're constantly chasing mistakes. Mm, break it down. Like Michael Irvin. Break that down for you. Michael Irvin was a mistake, but not drafting Randy Moss was a mistake because they listened to outside noise. Instead of drafting Randy Moss, they drafted Greg Ellis. We, if they had drafted Randy Moss, we wouldn't have this problem that because we'd have had another couple more Super Bowls when Troy was here with Mike because he would have just evened everything out. Free agents would have came to town. It would have been on and popping. But no. All right? Mm-hmm. Second time they done it. Okay. Was, was with, uh, was with um, letting Sean Payton go when they should have hired Sean Payton as the coach. So that's what the whole finasco was with, with Jason Garrett. Mm. Then they turned around and did the same thing with Kelly Moore. Scared they're going to lose that great new offensive mind because what happened with the Shanahan tree with the boy out there with the Rams. They chasing that. Mm. The same way with the with the contracts. They made that mistake with Brandon Carr and, and Ken Hamlin. And so now they don't want to sign no big free agents because they're trying to make up for mistakes in the past. They don't know how to live in the future. They live okay. in the past. You see, you got a family that really is not old money. Anytime you have new money, mm-hmm. with that, which is new money and new power, you don't know how to deal with it. You don't know how to control it. Because mm-hmm. you haven't had it your whole life. You spend part of your life not really having all that stuff, and then when you get it, you don't know how to act you don't know how to act with it. So like young rappers, they get all that money. Or young football players. Right, get right, anybody right. get a whole bunch of money. They win the lottery, then they broke. You know what I'm saying? They mean well, but they stubborn. Mm. 
You know what I'm saying? They they don't know how to admit that they're wrong. If they admit that they made a mistake, then they can't stand up there and be like, oh, well, we won 36 games. Right. You won 36 games because Mike McCarthy is a hell of a coach. It has nothing to do with no talent on that field. The Cowboys have zero talent. Dak Prescott is doing the same thing that he did in Stark. He is winning without help. Mm. Dak has never had, like you said this morning, Dak has never had a championship defense. He has never had a dominant defensive lineman that controlled the game. Patrick Mahomes has that. I mean, Chris Jones. He got since he, since he got Chris Jones in the middle. Yeah, yeah, Chris Jones got the same amount of Super Bowls Pat got. Exactly. He got three. Just like when, mm-hmm. when Troy got his three. You know why Troy got his three, don't he? Because of Leon Litt and, and, um, and, and Charles Haley. Yeah, yeah. They had a dominant defensive lineman in the middle that could not be blocked. Man. At one time, the Cowboys, the only thing we had was Deion Sanders and Leon Lett and Darren Wilson. You still couldn't run and pass on that defense. The offense just wasn't up to par. Troy never held up his end of the box. Deion and all of them guys were still winning. Nobody holds Troy Aikman to to the same stuff they do. Dak Prescott, oh, no, Jerry didn't give him what he needed. What's the difference? Jerry didn't get Troy what he needed, and they, they alibi Troy. When when Mike and Emmitt and all of them left the team, he still played with the Cowboys and he couldn't come produce a championship. It was Jerry's fault. Why does it have to be different with Dak Prescott? Man, I, I, that's the first time me really just thinking about it, you know, after all of those boys left and then Troy was still Troy, you know, and he couldn't get it done by himself. And I remember uh, just in tears, man. I cried, man, when Jake Plummer, man, when we played against those Cardinals, man, you remember that playoff game? Oh, that yeah, hurt. That. Oh, man, that hurt me real bad because it felt like this this, this past game, man. We, we were the better team. No, we wasn't a better team. Oh, the Cardinals, the Cardinals man. The Cardinals went better than Green Bay, even with the Cardinals then. We we were better in some spots, but you but but, but Jake the Jake Plummer though you remember that though you know yeah but Jake one thing about Jake <laughs> he ran around and them guys were young and they was home they them were guys we had playing like Leon not Leon Lynch but Shate Carve and all of them guys man them guys were getting high and partying man oh yeah and when yeah, they got yeah. ready to play that game they weren't ready yeah yeah it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah, this yeah. past season with that bunch we rolled out there for that playoff game mm. nowhere in the world. You gonna make me believe Neville Gallimore was supposed to be starting the defensive tackle and making him captain? Right. Come on, man! True. Playing them small linebackers, we didn't we didn't have a better team than Green Bay did because they had bigger defensive linemen and bigger offensive linemen than what we had. True, true, true. The quarterback gets support from his team and his players. He mm. don't have people. You don't hear Jordan Lloyd receivers mama talking about about him. You don't hear starting linebacker brother talking about the quarterback. You don't hear the owner coming out, well, we need to do this and we'll go far as that goes. Only in Cowboys world you have the ownership because, see, what happened was a couple of years ago when they gave the Cowboys that GM of the year, that made them even more stubborn because they're like, oh, we know what we're doing. That validated what they were doing. Right, right. And so now they will not listen. They will not go back the other way. Well, well, they they, they did put Jimmy Johnson in the Ring of Honor, man. You know, <laughs> but you know, you know why I'm gonna go on and break the news for y'all. Don't kill me. The only reason why they put Jimmy in that Ring of Honor was because the TV people that shooting that Netflix special asked for it. That was not a Jerry. The only reason why Jerry done that was was for the TV publicity and that stuff he was shooting with that TV show. He didn't do that out of kindness. It's hard. That's why it backfired on him. He didn't do that. If a Cowboy Nation doing the right thing by Jimmy, he want to do the right by Jimmy. Get Jimmy some of that money mm. that you done made over the year. Cause Jimmy built it. If people want to, Jimmy Smith want to sit up here and curse and holler and scream at Mike McCarthy. When you had your head coach, your head coach could fire people. He could pick the players that he want. He could dismiss his players. He could walk around there like a man. Yeah. Mike McCarthy can't walk around like a man. Yo. Oh, wow, man. Oh, my, man. Yeah. Computer, man, man, before I let you go, man, what was your sources or, or what was your thoughts, man, or what do you know of what happened really with Dan Quinn, man? What was your thoughts on that, bro? Man, I feel like Dan Quinn, which my sources told me, well, Dan Quinn sabotaged Mike McCarty because he wanted that head job. Oh, my God. And then you had him sitting up during that playoff week getting all that stuff together to present in front of them teams. And what he did in the past, he wasn't prepared for no Green Bay. 
Because he figured either way it go, he was good. He was going to either get the Cowboys job or another job. He mm. didn't care about that game because that team was not ready. He been running man all year. He come in and run that zone. Them players don't even know how to run that. That's why he had them wide open receivers running through the field. Yeah. He should have came out there and played bigger. He should have had he should have had something that Green Bay wasn't prepared for. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's a bad situation because you got Mike McCarthy. Now think about it. Mike McCarthy and Dan, and, and Dak Prescott uh, really should be the one that should have got the MVP and coach of the year because you winning without a with an old offense line with no defensive line. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It just it, it's 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 embarrassing. Man, man, that's that, that's crazy, computer man. Before I let you go, man, what projects you've been working on, man, and how the team been doing, man? You know, yeah, everybody's doing great. Paul just got a Grammy with those Killer Mike albums. Salute, so salute he just got to those that. Grammys. Paul's got a tour overseas in Japan. Just got a bunch of dates. Then we get ready. Uh, we're going to uh, get ready to jump out on tour. Uh, they're going to Canada and Japan. Then me and Law got some stuff that we're gonna put together. Okay. We're gonna do this big sports event with Law Nation Sports, and then we're gonna have some 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 of our rappers and some of our entertainer friends come out and support that event. So y'all be stay tuned to that. Make sure y'all follow his channel and do all that. Cause that's the only way you're gonna be able to find out and good and get good seats to all this stuff that we got planned for the year. Man, and uh, we're gonna well. to shoot another TV series. Uh, and then we got uh, with about three six Mafia. We kind of like the thing they did on uh, um, what's the guy called uh, uh, New Edition. New Edition. Like this, okay. Like the one they did with uh, NWA. Oh and wow. The one they did with Dirt about Molly Crew. So oh, that's wow, in the works now. Man, that's dope, man. And what about uh, a smooth uh, Jelly Roll? Is he going to roll roll anywhere with y'all this year or with us? Oh or yeah, what's he going got on? Going out and they looking to try to put together a tour with Three Six Mafia and Jelly Roll. So we'll see what how that goes. So y'all stay tuned for that also. Man, that's gonna be dope, man. Appreciate you, computer, man. Hey, hey, what I'm what I'm gonna need, man, is uh, uh, uh send me your intro. So when like when you in and out, man, I just I just play your intro, man. <laughs> Send me okay, one of them beats, cool. man. Them five beats, man. Appreciate you, bro. Oh, well. No doubt, man. It's computer, man. Y'all, man. That's my guy right there, man. Uh, always bring the good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anybody close, man, to the organization that knows some stuff, man, it's computer, man. So uh, appreciate him, man. Y'all check out him. Uh, especially check out his uh, IG page and beyond, man. He brings the uh, – the good stuff, man, and uh, salute to those boys, man, for getting that Grammy, man. You know how that is, and shout out to Killer Mike and all of those guys. I got 100 grand with the plan. Ooh. You're live on the nation, man, from the Ooh. 201. What's good, man? Ooh. Ah. Oh, hold on, hold on. What's up, my boy? Not much, man. Good with you. Hey, man, I wasn't ready to hear all of those facts, man, but uh, hey, I'm, I'm a- <laughs> hey, you know, oh, hey, he dropped That's the anvil crazy, over there, right? man. He did a great job on that, you know. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah, I believe it, though. Yeah, I mean. I believe it. Hey, as they say, the it. truth is stranger than fiction. Facts. Yeah, yeah, facts. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I, I – you just got to see how it play out, man. I, 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 the way that the Jones is playing, they don't want to pay nobody right now. Go ahead and don't pay nobody right now. It's going to cost you more on everybody next year. Yeah, they right say they don't have to pay. But go up. They say so, they don't uh, have to pay. I, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You don't have to pay. You don't have to pay. And, uh-huh. and, 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 and you know, I, I think in Steven's mind, Steven's like, I don't want to pay none of these big contracts. They can leave. I, I think that's how Steven is looking at it, man. Everybody can leave. Yeah, and you saw because how he, he don't spoke. Don't want to pay them big contracts no more. He you you saw how leave. he spoke about he the wide want... receiver Jalen Tolbert. He said that he think highly yeah, of him, Jalen yeah, Brooks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stupid. Stupid. He don't want to pay him. He don't want to pay. He, he looking. He, he looking to see if Jalen Tolbert going to step up and be C D Lamb. And then I think Stephen Jones is. You know how the running back market is. Steven yeah. Jones want to treat the whole team like that. When it's time for you to get your second contract, you out of here. We're not going to pay you. We're going to get somebody in the draft. So hey. boom, no, keep it going. Now, they don't want to pay no big contracts, not even the quarterback. Yeah, that's, that's so crazy that's right there. what's going to happen. We ain't happen. never going to have a team. We ain't Ooh. never going to have a team. Never. It's not going to happen. 
Should, should the I press only the... way they're going to pay you unless you unless you be team friendly with them, and ain't nobody doing that. Why am I going to take less money when I can go over here and win a chip when all you're going to do is not play your main players and just we just and try to think rookies going to step in here Man. and just produce like that? No, that's not going to happen. <sighs> Boy, hey, hey, when you spitting like that, bro, I'm just sitting here thinking – that I want to come back and go back and forth with you. But all I can think about is week three. I can think about week three. <laughs> I think about week three, man. I'm sitting here like, man, come on, man. I want to go back and forth with you on that. But uh, my, my only thing is we got into March the 13th, right? And then we will be. Ain't nothing happened. And nothing happened. Come on, don't big game James me, man. Don't ain't big game James me, man. Hey, you can see the writing on the wall, man. You can see the white, the writing on the wall. I'm oh. the, the writing on the wall. Oh my gosh, um, man. So, listen, it's the 29th, right? Right, right. So it's it's the 29th. Got two weeks to get this done. You got an extra day because of leap. Happening. It's leap year, man. So we got that extra day. It's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening. You got two uh, weeks to get this thing to happen. It's not happening. They already know what they're going to do. No, you already know what they're going to do. They're going to hit those buttons on that contract and get that $20 million. That's what right. they're going to do. Right, 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 right. So, 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 so break it down. So, so they're going to extend. They're going to play around with Diggs' number because they can just like that get us out of the $9 million. All right. Mm-hmm. I don't think mm-hmm. I don't think that they're gonna cut no, they're their gonna other son, Michael Gallup, though. That's, that's that's their son, you know. And I like Michael Gallup. That's my guy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and and then, they're not gonna cut Michael Gallup. Uh, Michael, uh, listen, uh, listen, Michael Gallup. We still paying you. Yeah. So guess what? You're gonna right. play, son. Son, you're gonna okay. play. We still paying you. Okay. You know right. what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like they're gonna play. They're gonna. Yo, Michael Gallup, get another year. You know. You know, he, you know, maybe this year he'll be better. And then who's going to get a – you already know who's going to get a bigger role. Stephen mm. Jones just said it out of his mouth. Yeah, Tolbert. Mm, Brooks. Stephen Jones just said it out of his mouth. So you looking for Brandon Cooks to come back and all of that? Yep, no. yep. He got Tolbert one more year. going to take that spot. Tolbert, who? Oh, 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 the wide receiver. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Brooks. He's not coming back. Jeez. Brooks not coming back. We, 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 Tolbert's going to take his spot. Oh. They're not going to go in the draft and draft no wide receiver. No, uh-uh. Tobin's going to take his spot. He's going to get a bigger role. Watch. It's going to be Lamb, <laughs> Michael Gallup, and Tobin. Okay, so 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 they're going to go for the uh, all of the people that's under contract to go into their final year, in their final year, just like the coaching staff, EOL at, you know, end-of-life contracts this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's going to be Lamb, Michael Gallup, and Tobin. That's going to be your three. And, you know, they already got running backs on the practice squad and all that, so they're not going to go in the draft and get no running backs. Yeah. The running backs is going gonna, is gonna to be here. They, they yeah. might throw a, if, if they cheat, you might, what's in, Rico might come back, and then they're going to roll with another running back that they probably got on, on a practice squad already. That's that right there. They're going to go in the draft and get a big boy. That's what they're going to do. And Cowboy Nation go, yay, yay, we got a big boy, yay. They're going to go in the draft and probably get a linebacker. That's what they're going to do. Hey, hey, d- these, are, gonna- these are our, our running backs on the contract now. Malik Davis, Snoop mm-hmm. Connor, not dog, and uh, Hunter Lupke. Those are our three running backs yeah. right now. If them, yeah. Boys, yeah, if, them boys, if them boys goes into this uh, year with those three, and then they, you we know. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, we are rolling. They going to hype up Deuce. Deuce get a bigger roll. Oh, and Deuce, Deuce Bond. Yeah, Deuce Bond. That's four guys. Rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, man. Know, Deuce get a bigger roll and all that. <laughs> man, come on, man. You oh. sound, you like oh, Big Game okay. James now. Boy, you, you, you Big Game that. James, listen, man. Listen, yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, no Kool-Aid. No Kool-Aid. I'm going to be 100% honest. Uh-huh. Right uh-huh. I'm gonna be 100% honest. Uh-huh. I used to get mad at Big Game. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I, I used to don't like Big Game because Big Game come out there and now. It's like a Big Game. You tripping, bro. You tripping, Big yeah, Game. Yeah, yeah, I used yeah. to get mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to get mad. And, and, and the only reason why I ain't snipe him on your show because that's your boy. That's the only reason why yeah. I ain't do it. Yeah, but yeah. I used to get mad at you get mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used yeah. to get mad at him. Now I ain't get mad at him no more. I'm on uh, his side. Oh, you're on his side. <laughs> I'm on his side now. I used to get mad at him. 
I used to want to come on your show with. I used to want to come on your on your show with sniper. I, I, but 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 the only reason why I ain't do it because that's your boy. It's my boy. It's my guy. <laughs> that's the only reason why. But Man. now, listen, I see it. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Man, they're gonna put Michael Parsons at linebacker to try to get that. To try to get that contract down. You know. Stephen Jones already said it. We suffered at death and when, 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 when he wasn't at linebacker, so we kind of suffered. So Stephen Jones won him back at linebacker for that money. Per- I know you telling me it don't matter. Yes, it will. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Jones is going to make it matter. He's going to make it matter when that propaganda come out when it's time to pay him when he played linebacker all this year. Right. Man, man. All right, man. I'm going to let you go, man. But, man, God, no, man. Hey, it, it is crazy, man. But I appreciate you, boy. Yeah, that's my guy right there, man. Good call from my guy. I ain't talked to him about Meek Mills or none of that stuff, man. I know you're on the East Coast. You better, you got to hush your mouth, man. You're on that side of the world. Yeah, that's the deep. Me don't know nothing. The, the, the Meek, me Meek Mills said, hey, academics, when I see you, we, we, it's gonna be some about some combinations, you know. <laughs> yeah, what happened with that? Oh man, I guess him and um, I mean, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. They wore they I wore the same shirt. Heard about the on a new lawsuit. That's it. And I ain't hear nothing about no Meek Mill. Yeah, man. You, hey, you just go to Twitter and type in Meek Mills, uh, uh, Sean Jones, and you you see what we see see what's all uh, working. Got a new DJ, lawsuit popping, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Academics. Get a, get a lawsuit popping. Meet yeah, some money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, well. We'll find out, man. Appreciate you, man. That one hundred grand with all the plan, right, man. man. Shout out to him, man. All right. So the next caller I got on the phone. She's our queen to be. From the nine ten, you are in Queen Cowboys. You're live on the Nation, brought to you by Prize Picks. You're in the mix. Talk to me. Hey, Law, what's going on? How you uh, doing? Uh, one day at a time. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I know. Yeah, I know. yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't even know what. To, I don't even know what to say about this Bible. I'll see. Get it off I your chest, I, um, then. Get it off your chest, I then. Think, Go ahead. <laughs> No, you really don't want me to get it off. Come on, well, well, get it off your chest. I got some choice get words. Get it off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Get, 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 get it, get it, get it. Before before March the no. 13th, it's the new season of March 13th. I don't want to hear all of it after March 13th. It's new season. So so go ahead. Get it out. <laughs> I am so sick of Stephen Jones. Okay. Some Jones, I don't know what to do. I mean, every time I see mm-hmm. him, hear his name, hear him talk, I mean, it just makes my skin crawl <laughs> and my blood boil, uh, you know, because he is, there are so many adjectives that you can use to describe right, 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 right. how low and awful this man is. Mm. You know, I, I don't I don't trust him. Um I wish that, uh, you know, there was some kind of way we could get them out of our front office. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. To get them out of our front office because the common denominator for this almost 30 year, years has been the Joneses. Mm. It's been the Joneses, and it has been their decisions and their choices. Nobody made them keep uh, Jason Garrett as the head coach all those years. Nobody. They could have replaced Jason Garrett. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And, I mean, all of them losing years, and they kept him. Yet they want to put uh, Mike McCarthy on this damn short-ass leash. One year. Get it right. Get her done. <laughs> to, to get it done. Man, I wish that God just in their sleep just made them have a dream of them being on the same level that they mm. put everybody else on. Wee. And see how they feel for a day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It, it, they just and and all these people talking about that. I mean, that season, the majority of the season have been just like peanut butter, no jelly, Kool Aid, no sugar. Right. You know, uh, um, mashed potatoes, no gravy. Uh-huh. That's what these seasons have been. Because they will get, 
you know, have one thing but not the other. You mm. know, a bad offensive line or a bad defense. Right, right, uh, right. They right. took away his number one wide receiver when they took Amari Cooper away. Mm-hmm. And they expected him to win with just CD. Mm. You know, I mean, I ain't even think about them damn fans that sit up here and, and talk all that crazy shit because they don't want to educate themselves to find out what's actually been going on. All they do is listen to what the national media says <laughs> about the situation. They don't want to listen to y'all that tell them the damn God's honest truth. Mm-hmm. And I don't even see how you sit up here and listen to their ass day after day after day long. Yeah. I am so serious. You, you already because know how it goes. <laughs> you know, you... You tell them the truth, and they don't want to listen. It's, I mean, it's just like they can't, they, you get them toilet paper to wipe their ass, and they'll still use a uh, newspaper. Mm. Woo-wee! I'm just, I'm just so sick and tired. I mean, I, I make sure I take my blood pressure medicine every damn day. Because mm. if I got to, I mean, because I love my cowboys. And so if I'm going to be informed and if I'm going to keep up with what's going on with my cowboys, right, right. I also, I mean, it's just like the wheat with the tares. You right. got to deal with both of them. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, girl, you spit. But it's not mm. easy. I mean, I had to get that off. Uh-huh. Uh, I love you. I love my cowboys. How about them cowboys? Um, I can't wait for them season to kick off because I want to see what Zim is going to do. I'm really excited to see what he's going to pull off. Oh, yeah, I love the roller coaster. You went in slow, and then you went in hot with it, and then you brought it back to the positivity. I love it. I can't wait to see it myself, Queen. Thank you so much for calling in. All right, Long. That's, that's my girl right there, Queen. Yes. <sighs> I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. I got my God from the 214. Darius, you're live on the nation, brought to you by Prize Picks. You in the mix. Talk to me, man. Hello, I apologize in advance. You can probably hear the music in the background, so I'm trying to keep it a little short. Okay. But um, okay. what I'm gonna say, what I'm gonna say is that um. Uh, man, Stephen Jones, man, like, I, I try not to go here, but it just is what it is, man. Like, I got to give it up to God. Like, I, me personally, I, like. Hey, I, I know you're happy it. right now, though. I know because now you're sitting there saying, hey, I know for sure. It's a make it or break it type of deal for Mike McCarthy. But keep going, keep going. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, 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 yeah. I know you. Know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, since you brought it up. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I know. That, I knew. Uh, that, I knew you, you were know. driving down that road. I just wanted to press the gas and get there faster. So go ahead and get it, get it, get I, it, get I it. Actually, yeah. I actually, I actually wasn't. I, oh. Like, the last time I called, yeah, I, I actually wasn't gonna go there. The last time I called, that's that's when I just said, you know, I'm gonna just leave it alone. I'm gonna let it play out because uh-huh. it's going to play out. So I'm gonna just uh-huh. let it play out, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up about it. Just I don't know why people love that band so much, and, and we done lost in the playoffs the same type of way. Every time, like, can anybody explain it? Since he is so good, how are we losing in the playoffs the same type of way? Can, can somebody explain that? Hey, man. Um, can you explain that, Long? All right, so. we he's so good? <laughs> hey, jeez. Or, or, or were we that bad? You know what I'm saying? Before he got there, it's just some of the residuals still left. And I know, God, dog, it's been five years, well, four years now, right? <laughs> 2020, 21, yeah. yeah, yeah, so four years now. So yeah, man, I feel you what you're saying though. But hey, don't don't you see some type of kinds of improvements on this team from year to year? You you do, but it's like given the given the talent that we have, it should be I should get more out of them. You know what I'm saying? I feel like this team, that team that this past year, we should have at least been to the NFC championship. And to be to be all the way honest with you, that team where uh, Michael Parsons had his first year here, his rookie season, right. that team should have made it to the NFC Championship. Am I right or wrong? About yeah, that? yeah, I yeah. Now, like- now, now, this is what I was saying. I think I was talking about this on the final word. I was saying that yeah, twenty twenty one. If he if we had any element of surprise, it would have been that year to take it there because 
you, you had the Amari Cooper, you had the young and emergence of C.D. Lamb, Lord, and Lord. then uh, you had Cedric at least Wilson. Cedric Come Wilson, on. who was like the guy that can get you things going. But ultimately what we had in the game was 14 penalties, man. And I know it sounds like excuses, but you normally don't win those games, bro. And who fought it? I mean, it, yeah. Go. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm you gotta go. start. You gotta start with the coaches on that, man. They they supposed to be the disciplinarian. Uh, we need a disciplinarian coach over here, man. And that's what's on offense and defense. We had too many penalties. And, and all we having all all we having a culture issue. Who does that fall on? I mean, you know it, it like, do. I know. You, I know. I know. You I, can I, put I know. That on, on, on the Joneses, but when it comes to the <laughs> actual team, like like we, what Michael Parsons is talking about, who does that fall on? But didn't but didn't we seen Mike McCarthy? And I'm not just trying to be an advocate only for Mike McCarthy, but we seen him try to at least he tried to do the rotation of C's like captains every week. I don't like that, but at least he tried, right? And then he also tried to get team building stuff by smashing watermelons, right? And and now all of a sudden yeah. they use that as a racial ploy, right? He was like, damn, you know, some right. of my best people. Look, my assistant, Rob Davis, is black. You know what I'm saying? He started naming all of the people that's black, you know. But <laughs> they, somehow, black. hey, hey, <laughs> my neighbor is black, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know that's how it is over here in Texas, man. So he tried. It's not like he didn't try. And Mike McCarthy, yeah. he tried his best to 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 change the way this team move. Remember, they took the names off the back of the players' jerseys, yeah. you know, and just had the numbers because he said he wanted to focus in on the player's skill set and not the name. And then Jerry was like, hey, man, I'm yeah. losing money, man. They put the names back on there. And then he came in with the philosophy of making the quarterbacks wear red jerseys opposed to everybody wearing the same colors. So I, I get it. McCarthy himself tried to change the culture up until his knowledge and ability. I think that he come from a football pedigree, from a football state or, or, or city or what have you. But the problem is that he always had to fight to get those things, and it took him a long time to get Kellen Moore out of the building. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm going to let it go. Like, okay, I, I hey, well, 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 hell, I'm a, I'm a well, hell, it's at the end of the year now, so, hey, we got to find out what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to let that go. I, I'm going to let that play out because it's, it's going to play out. And then I want to see how all y'all going to be once he, he let I, go. I, I, I'm just not going to bet but, you $150, though, you know, like I did last I'm, year. I'm, you know? I'm, I, I, I'm up in the price. It's 250 at this point. 250 I, I'm up in the price. But what I was calling to say was, <laughs> was on, bro. You can like you can hear with the tone of his voice. Does that man sound like he want to win the Super Bowl? No, he don't sound like he's like I like I, bro. Yeah. I gotta let I, like that right there was sitting me in in a literal frantic like anger mode. Like I will literally bust out every window in my car listening to him talk because it's like I bro. I gotta let it go. Yeah. I got. I'm not going I'm not gonna talk about no free agents. I'm not gonna talk about who I want in the draft. Because everything right. that I want, they go the opposite way. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, fam, I, I got to let it go. I, I'm going to give it up to God, and I'm going to give it to you, Law. Hey, you know man. what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so, yeah, that's what that is, man. No doubt, Darius, man. I appreciate you. I thank you for calling in, Chief. You have a good one. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, hey, man, you know. Shout out to you, Stokes. He says, I agree. Shout out to you for the $5 super chat, too, by the way. I agree with Queen. Watching the Cowboys free agency is like having weed and no cigars. Just depressing. Just pay the guys. Jerry need to retire. It's just, here's my, here's my only thing with the Jones family. We all, to a degree, we like them in certain ways, but we despise them in other ways. Like, they're going to will and deal, and I get that that's part of business. But could you just do a little less talking, Stephen? You didn't have to talk for 25 minutes, and y'all didn't have to repurpose it and put it back on the website. You're a billion-dollar corporation, you know. You didn't have to say nothing. Just let this thing play out. You can stroll through 31 other teams, and there will not be their executive vice president of operation talking for 25 minutes. So I just look at it like this. It's a competition between Jerry Jones and John Stephen Jones. It's a competition. They just talk.
talk, 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 talk. Giving away ideas, giving away secrets, giving away stuff that we don't need to hear. And as a content curator, to a degree, yeah, I'm going I'm to use some of that. You know what I'm saying? Keep the lights on over here. But, hey, can y'all just simmer, simmer down just a little bit? You know, you don't have to talk about those things, man. You move in silence over here. But at the end of the day, we didn't know, we didn't have to know about the plans with Michael. Well, we're not with Michael Gallup, but he did mention Gallup. We didn't have to know about those plans. We didn't have to know about CD Lamb. We didn't have to know about the contractual situation with Dak Prescott. Uh, Stokes says, I want to see what happened when Stevens take over. Our, our biggest hope would be if he takes over, he sits down in the, in the king's chair, right? And he say, well, damn, I'm going to need a general manager. I'm just going to be the owner. And you bring in a general manager. But uh, we, d- we don't know whether or not that's going to happen either. I got the 856, and then I have my guy, JV, uh, you're next. But the 856, you're in the mix. You're live on The Nation, brought to you by Prize Picks. Yeah, what's up, Lord, man? Hey, man, all is well. Can't complain, bro. Yeah, man, I'm just tired, man. I've been a fan so long, man. Same old stuff. They don't want to spend no money, man. They- they tight, like you say. They act like they could take the stuff to the grave with them. The money, you know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just pay the players that we, you know what I mean, we need to succeed. Like every other organization, you know what I mean? They spending money. They going all in. The real definition of going all in is try to win the Super Bowl. And us, we just want to stay tight and keep talking about what we want to do and never do it. Like it's really disappointing as a fan, man. Like right, 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 right. It, it, it's very. It's like. I get it. You 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 think about the cap. You mentioned the cap, and, and you talk about hey, yes, the thirty million dollars came in, but not just to us. Came in for the entirety of the league, and we got to also blah 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 with the cap. But I, hey, we don't care about that. We trying to win games, man. It's like what the four ers did. They went all in when they went and got CMC, and they already had a Debo. You didn't hear them talking about well, we got Debo, and we got to figure out down the line if we're gonna. Pay Brandon Ayuk. Uh, we got CMC. You know they didn't say all of that, right? They, right, exactly, they move things exactly. around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's how you gotta do it, man. It's like you know what I mean, like you ain't gonna never win if you don't, you don't weigh your options, man. Like Henry out there, man. That's the perfect back for us, man. He fit everything we like to do. Like he could bruise the defense down, wear him down. You know what I mean? Like and that is. That help out our defense too, because they're resting while he's. You know what I mean, like getting our, getting his first downs. Like we, we was terrible in the red zone last year, man. We get him that'll fix all that. I'll run, run them four straight downs to be in fourth and goal. Like you know what I mean, like. Yeah, but to know, but to know that Derrick Henry already, you know, and all of these people like the Baltimore Ravens were willing to trade for him, and it would have went through. But the Titans kind of like, you know what, we want to finish his, we want to honor his contract and let him finish this season and not go to Baltimore. Right. I think truly right. Baltimore probably would have beaten the Kansas City Chiefs if they had a Derrick Henry in the backfield plus the other host of weapons that they had. And they weren't talking about, hey, that they already paid their quarterback a quarter of a billion dollars over there that he don't need more and more weapons. Right, exactly. Like, yeah, they looking for more like, weapons for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you, you know what I mean? That's how you win, man. They keep, like, you've been saying it for years, man. Like, you know, they keep saying they're trying to win, but you, you're not proving to nobody that you are because you're doing the same thing every every single year. Like, Yeah, yeah that's crazy. And, 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 and the, the crazy thing, thing about the Ravens is that their run game was still good. <laughs> it's not like that damn run game exactly. was terrible. They and they like, were still looking for yeah, better on the run like, game. <laughs> like four different running backs. Like, they, they find them back. That's what I can say about Baltimore. Like, they yeah. always got backs in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's crazy, man. But we would look at a situation whereas when we have something that's average or we have something right. good, we don't want to add more to it for it to be great. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, right. like, 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 good. All right, we good with our wide receivers. When I mentioned that, yeah, I know for sure that we have a dominant number one threat at a wide receiver. Everybody else threes. 
I'm trying to right, add yeah, to my, that. My boy dog, man. That boy dog. Like. Yeah, I'm trying to add to CD Lamb, man. I'm not trying to take away. And I know Brandon Cook's good. I know that what he's able to do from a veteran leadership and beyond, but he's not a true number two because where he dominates at is in the same exact spot that CD Lamb is at, right? And when you put exactly. CD Lamb inside the slot and you got Brandon Cooks on the outside, now you're sitting there like, hey, that's kind of productive. Because the way right. C.D. Lamb eats is from the inside with two-way goals, and the way Brandon Cooks eats is from the inside with two-way goals, and now you're right lining up a tiny, smaller, wide receiver on the outside that DB's sitting on routes, they're redirecting him, they really don't have a real threat of his speed anymore like they used to. And then when he did right. get over the top, it's like him and Dak Prescott wasn't on the same page. Dak Prescott throwing it to the man and the moon, and they can't connect. But when we were connecting with, uh, what's this kid name, number nine, Kevontae Turpin, right? Oh, Turpin, yeah, yeah. Turpin, yeah. We connect, we connect with Turpin, but due to the money, Turpin don't get on the field. Because the Jones family right. look at it like, hey, he, we need to put our money out there. We don't need to be benching this dude. You know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> yeah, that's what I ain't like neither. They wasn't giving him enough <laughs> burn, man. He was a nice speed, I mean, like a speed right. team. And like, we could have used him on a lot of plays, right? And then we don't never do no trick plays, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy, bro. And, Boy. And, and, and one more point, I like the, I like, I want us to grab another receiver. I want, I like that boy from um, LSU, uh, Thomas. Never, um, yes, I want him. Man, he big, man. He a big receiver, like. Yeah, he got a good last name too, man. Them Thomases, man. They keep the promise. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Go get him. I'm, yeah, gonna, I'm gonna, gonna check to see if he's related. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I would love to get him, man. I like uh, a couple receivers out there. Like this year, like the receiver is back. Though it's a lot of good receivers out there. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm hopefully, man. We trying to do something, man. I'm, you know I mean, I'm just sitting back, being patient. Like they, they, they've been something this dream for years, man. Keep saying they're gonna do something, they'll never do it. So I'm just sit back and. They patent and hopefully, hopefully they go all in like they said he is, man. Yeah, the only thing, uh, fam, that we can do is because we, we can't we can't make the move, right? But we can't call right. it out. So the play is this is the play. Remember, he and this has been reported that they didn't talk to none of the agencies out there, uh, David Mugala, and uh, they didn't talk to uh, uh, the other kids' agent, uh, uh, Pat, uh, not Pat Mahomes. Uh, Michael Parsons, and they didn't talk to uh, Todd France. They didn't talk to nobody, right? The right. problem is, is when free agency, the first opening week of free agency, that's when all of your guys, the the, the good guys, right, that's on right. the market, and I know you're going to pay a premium price for that. The play right. been on the Cowboys, been the reason why we don't make a move on the open market on the first week of the free agency is because we got to make sure we secure our own guys first. We got to make sure that we got our money together first. Right. So all I can do as law nation is call them out because they should already be working on that right now, you know, so that when the free agency open up, then they can go get their premium one or two guys that they need to put us over the top. But what they're going to do is, they're going to wait till like the second or the third week of free agency. And then they'll make right. a move and it's going to be earth shattering because everybody's going to be like, hey, that can be the game changer. Right. That's what I'm saying. I don't know why they always wait till the last minute. Last they minute. Always do that. That's like you That's like you going to the buffet you're trying to be all late. You know what I mean? Everybody picked up all, over all the food already. You know what I mean? Right, it's right. The bull stuff left like. Hey man, I hate that man picking over us. Look, give me, give it to me when it's fresh, man. You know, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, it's, it's a good, good call from you, man. Talk, uh, hey, 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 tell people who you are because I ain't get your name, fam. Oh, my name's Sharon, man. CMD, man. Hold on, put it down, Sharon. Yeah. CMD. Die hard fan, man. CMD, man. Appreciate another you, bro. Another take though, man. I had, yeah, another take though, real quick. I had it on. This year, so my girl, she like Green Bay, man. We went out to the bar, had all my gear on, man. They Ooh. tearing me up in there, man. Ooh, I know she, I know she put it on you too, bro. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, what, man? I still, still can't hear the end of it. Like, oh man, oh my gosh, man. I, I know the feeling, man. You, you know, you, shit. what, man? That, that stuff was crazy, like. Yeah, back, back way in uh, the early, like mid to early two thousand, I dated a chick that was a Patriots fan. I mean, she was a Patriots right. fan. I was like, ah, oh, Lord, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Indeed. I knew, I knew, I knew that was terrible. Man. Yeah, That's terrible, man. They good deeds back then. Mm, yeah, they they were winning and everything. I was like, ah, it wasn't like she was bandwagon. She was like she liked the Patriots when they were like with Blesso and them. So it was like, oh, okay, right, right. you know. And then and then I'm a and then and then and then, and then the other thing was I had to end up leaving a shit. She was a Boston fan too. I was like, oh, Lord. I'm a Lakers guy. Oh, yeah, they, <laughs> okay. oh, man. Oh, so yeah, I got so it on. I, I got it on both good. ends. That that yeah 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 yeah. I had to leave her. Yeah 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 yeah. She knows she is. Right, I had to leave her. I said, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yeah, that was too much. <laughs> yeah, too much, man. So she a Patriots and a Boston. So she. All right, bro, man. Appreciate right. you calling in, fam. Sharon, CMD. All right, man. man take care, man. Yeah. Cowboys Nation, let's go. Yeah, indeed, salute. Yeah, indeed, man. Yup, yup. So shout out to all of those man who's. <laughs> Who's a Boston fan right now? If y'all a Boston fan, let me know in the chat, man. Y'all Boston. Uh, Celtics. Can't stand y'all. All All right. um, We're down to the nitty gritty. I got this right here and put it everybody on. The conference has been locked. From the 901. JV, you're live on the nation, man. Salute. Long Nation, what's going on? You doing okay? Boy, one day at a time, one foot in front of the other, bro. Talk to me, man. Man, so it's just it's just an honor to be always on here with you. Like I always say, to go to uh, social media. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I appreciate so, you, man. Yeah, but so I, I I didn't I didn't catch the beginning mm-hmm. of, of of your stream, but I did want to get on here and just say. Um, I'm not. I'm not believing the all-in statement from Jerry Jones. And as far as Stephen Jones go, I, I know he is going to be the first thing for all-in that that all-in can be. You know, yeah. he's going to go. He's going to do his typical thing, and all that, that. Like you always say, today and today's Cowboys team has to win in spite of coaching and ownership. That front office, yeah, and it, it's gonna it's gonna be hard. But shoot, I'm not gonna be sitting over here throwing players up under the bus because of the of the dumb moves or the non moves that that the front office and the coaching staff make. You know, it, it it's like shoot, like I told you before, you can sit up here a million and one times and say something. And you have some, you have two hundred folks that still want to say something that just prosperous that makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, but but sure, you know, hey, together, this whole team, if they just gel together and they understand what they have to do. Now, I, I, I truly believe they need to go ahead and bring back Stephon Gilmore and probably bring back one more veteran. Who who also has some skins on that wall, but I believe that can get us over the hump, especially with the with the knowledge that Zimmerman and 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 and, and Mike McCarthy possess. Right, right, right. That that one player. So so here here's the uh, piece here though. All right, so we got guys with contract thresholds that need to get paid. Right. We got right. ultimately the true believer of the draft is Stephen Jones. Like he don't like the draft. He loved the draft. And then you have the wave of free agency after the draft, right? At the players, at the teams and got players that they wanted out of the draft and they tend to cut players. And then you had that second wave. So Stephen Jones play is basically, we're not going to make a strong push at the free agency, right? That he loves to take care of the contracts before the draft, right? And then you go into the draft, you draft the guys that you're looking to replace from the draft the, on the team that you have, not to the complement. They draft to replace, right? 
And then yes, and then after the draft, they look to, okay, let me see who I can bring in for a cup of coffee. Now, that, that yes, principle, yes, yes. philosophy and working, though, for them, but it haven't worked for them in the postseason because – you you need to get that impact player that can do some crazy good stuff for you, and not someone who's broken, who's older. You know what I'm saying? Who got yeah, some, yeah, some lumps exactly, in? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We, yeah. we like uh, we do need that one. That we do need that guy to come in from the outside. That 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 bastard is boss cowboy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, he 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 can't be that long in the tooth. I mean, give him about 28 years old. You know what I'm saying, but he's yeah. still in the peak. Go ahead and and and, and, and I'm I'm wishing on a star and I'm begging and pleading. Uh, yeah. Catboy, go ahead and just be like, man, we're not finna sit up here and try to try to cheat this guy out because he's proven something. Like to be a hunter, he's proven oh. that he deserves that money. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, but you know, I, I mean, like I said, I I I want. And I know that this team here is just right there. They right, right. They are right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you like me then. I'm like, all we need is just just get a little bit bigger bump, man, on the front end. Just go ahead and get that, that, that guy, you know. And, and I get it, oh. man. I get it, bro. But, I get it. We, 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 we can do it, though. Now, now I, I, I would like to uh, ask you this question. Um, I'm not. I'm not very familiar on the roles that all of uh, Jerry Kids play with the organization. But why does uh, Charlotte play within organization, and uh, and it, it also uh, Jerry Jr. All right. So I'm, gl- I'm glad. I'm glad you answered. Them, bump them in front of uh, Stephen. All right. So Charlotte Joan is brand and merchandiser ambassador so so she's uh she handled everything and everything to deal with the artwork uh trademarks of the cowboys and like if, if you get in trouble it'd be charlotte jones team to reach out to you and say you utilize this image not to the likings that we like to present and represent for the cowboys and we will ask you kindly to take it down you know that that's more charlotte jones on a larger scale you know she got a team of people under her and jerry jr uh, I believe he handles like the financial arm of like the merchandise sales, ticket sales, um, selling out arenas. He, he went working hand to foot with his dad, Jerry Jones, on that aspect. So, so that's what those two do from that uh, aspect of their family tree. So, I guess Steven, he, he basically locked in. Yeah, Stephen Jones is locked in as being executive. See, that, that player personnel, my- yeah, 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 <laughs> and, and and there's another Jones, uh, Jones Junior. Junior. He's he's gonna. A birdie told me, you know, I ain't gonna say the name, but a birdie told me that he's gonna take on the role for Will McClay. He's been in the draft room. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been oh, in the draft. No. He's been in. The, he's been in the draft room for all of those years. You know. You remember oh. he nudged. He nudged that. That. Look at CD Lamb. You know. Be looking at CD Lamb, because Will McClay is only here. You know, Will McClay. Unfortunately, fortunately, he's only here until his son graduate. It, 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 I believe that could be Jones Junior. Uh, yeah, yeah. There was something. Like John Jones Junior. Yeah, 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 yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Well, go ahead. But I do believe that right there can be changed, you know, with with with, with some with some minor moves within the organization. I believe that that particular aspect of Will McClay only being here because of his son. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He adjusted, yeah, sure. you know. But a bird, please, a bird told me that, you know, you know, y'all y'all take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> Okay, I mean <laughs> that's what we don't. Now, now I, I'm just, I'm just saying I would, I, man, I would go out there marching all the way straight from Memphis, straight to Dallas, back to Frisco. You know, hey, no, nah, don't let Will McClay go. Go ahead and man, and, he ain't gonna stay long, man. Out. Unless unless you can get his son to go to what's all the colleges around here? SMU, TCU, yeah. that's close. <laughs> Yeah, North Texas, all North that. Texas yeah, yeah, yeah. is up. Unless you can get his son, come on, North Texas, come on, SMU. You know, come on, Jerry. come on, Jerry, make pull some strings. So, so. 
<laughs> yeah, that's my Steve. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, brother, it's always great talking with you, man. I just want to call in and just let you know I appreciate what you're doing. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, until free agency uh, really kick in, I'm I'm really not gonna have much to really say about it. I just want to know about what the um, what the uh, what the chain of events will go as far as the family is concerned. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're 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 spots within this organization, and yeah, shoot, man. I really didn't want. I didn't expect the Will McClay thing. But shoot, man, hey, man, hey, man, if it, I gotta come out there. I will walk. You will walk. Birthday, <laughs> I, <can. laughs> I will march. I yeah, mean, everything yeah. I gotta do. Look here, bring keep Will McClay here. Yeah, whatever you got to do, and Jerry, Jerry, you know you can do it. Yeah, I mean, he know do he it. can, man. Uh, appreciate you for calling in, bro. Thank you. All right, now, have a great one, bro. There's my guy, JV. But, but that, that's just the basis of any family business, y'all, you know. the Now, no, Jerry Jr. is in the financial room, but I'm talking about the other. I'm talking about one of the grandsons will be taking on or be a, a understudy. He's an understudy now as being one of the, uh, what do you call it, player personnel people, GM. So he's understudying that. And, Come on, man. That's just how it is, man. Hey, Leon, Matt, Freddie, all of y'all, Scorpio, all of y'all would do the same thing, man. Shoot, if I fool around and get a Fortune 500 company or a billion-dollar company, man, you see Twin Maker with a job. I mean, you see Big Game James cussing people out at the front door. You see Boss Cowboy, all the people I roll with. Queen would be somewhere in the building. You know, uh, uh, Sad- Sadiqua, she'll be there. Natasha, everybody, man. I put everybody on, man. I don't know how long the business will last, but, but, but shoot, that's just how it goes. But if I'm the owner, I, I put the people on that I know. And then all of Lauren and London, shoot, them two, my, my, my two little ones. Shoot, executive suite. You know, their name ain't coming off of none of the things in the building. And y'all be like, man, Law Nation, man, shoot, he just running a family owned business, man. Lauren and London, man, they get all of the perks, man. Yeah, they my blood. You know, I'm looking out for them, you know. <laughs> That's how it goes, man. The, hey, he, he, he grooming them to be in the seat. Lauren Nation be up in here. London Nation be all up in here. That, y'all know how that goes. <laughs> ain't this right, man? <laughs> Ain't that right, JV boy? Action Power? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Action Power will be in there, man. You know, I'll put him in the HR room, you know, scan some stuff, man. You know, I'd be like, man, I remember Action Power following my channel, you know, all the way back in 2020, something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's how it goes, man. We're we going to work, work it that way. Aaron, man, from the 562, you're live on The Nation, man, brought to you by Prize Picks. Talk to me. Lord, how you doing today? Man, I'm doing okay, man. Talk to me, man. Damn, man. Um, I know everybody's talking about the Joneses and whatnot, but yeah, I'm yeah. just talking about um shoot. I know we got Mike Zimmerman. Do you think his philosophy on the defense will impact us on the first season or do we gotta wait for year two? Damn, that's a good oh, that's a ton of a load of a question there. Like how much do you rip out and change, you know, from exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. In one year. Whew. In one year. No, why, why, you, why you had to put it to me that. like that, bro? Why you had to tell me oh, like man. that, man? I, I, I was just trying to change, you know, the name. Because everybody's on the money. Everybody's on the Joneses. I'm like, but none of that's going to change because we don't have the power for that. So my focus is on defense. All right. So, 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 boom. All right. So, uh, Al Harris, he he's going right. to keep all of his techniques and principle the same, right? Secondary, straight. Uh, front, defensive front. We're going to have Greg Ellis, Paul Gunter, and Jeff uh, Z. He's going to teach these guys different techniques. So what what's going to be new here is I'm quite sure they're going to take what was bad, which was linebacker philosophy and principles, right, and they're going to deal away mm-hmm. with that, and they're going to bring in their core philosophy and principles. I'm waiting for the okay. day when they hire – a linebackers coach, unless that's going to be Paul Gunter's role, right? I just don't foresee mm-hmm. Scott McCurley and Darian Thompson teaching these boys anything new from linebacker spots. And we we gonna need two linebackers. At the end of right. the day, we yeah, gonna we need two it. two of them. Yeah, two solid, two solid. solid yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I ask for. 
Yeah. So now, do you sign? Everybody's talking about CD Lamb, Michael Parsons, and all that. Do you? When do you sign O.D.? Because I think he's underrated. It's a contract year for him. So what we need to do is, for right now, this is what Zim and Mike McCarthy is doing. They looking at tape. They talking scheme and philosophy. That's why they're not in um, uh, the combine right now. Cause it, mm-hmm. Because Mike McCarthy and Mike Zim, Zim definitely got to get familiar with the guys that he have, right, before he start looking right. for someone else, and then they may not be as good. So Zim is going to come in and say, okay, this technique right here with the hands and shooting other hands and feet is just too sloppy for me to work with. Or, hey, I can work with a little bit of this from Osa. Let me see if I can get him in the lab when we when, when this new season kick off, right? And right. then, and then what? If Mike Zim is also doing, he's calling around to other coaches. He's calling around to some of the players when it's legally eligible to tamper, right? And he's seeing uh-huh. whether or not, hey, come on, Hunter, come on. can you just do me a solid and come on with us? You know, uh, that's what even um, Parcells did. Remember Parcells bringing all of those boys that was from his old right. regime with him, right? Some of the test of birdies mm-hmm. and some of the other defensive players that knew his system. So I'm thinking that Zim, in a short time, because remember, we hired him late. <laughs> you yeah. know, and now we got to figure out. Start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a slow start. So now he's, and he's been out of football for a full year. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's gonna he's gonna he's burning the midnight oil, man. I I, I don't think that he want to fail this organization, so he's gonna put in the extra time to make sure that everything is jumping and rolling right now. And, and what they doing okay. is they putting the ultimate trust on the scouting department, mm-hmm. and, and of course Will McClay and Stephen Jones. They putting all of their trust on those boys to make sure that they are not ax- that they're not finna uh, can them by going out to combine. And not getting guys that can help them now. Okay, okay. Now, yeah. do you draft? I mean, like, do you replace J. Ron Curse with, with Donovan Wilson, or do you draft another safety? Well, 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 Zim, he he may have a little leg up on J. J. Ron Curse because he coached him before, right? He never coached. Mm. He never coached. Uh, well. Wilson, yeah, yeah. So, but he's looking at tape now. <laughs> he's looking at like, well, damn, Curse still got them damn terrible hips, and he still ain't doing yeah. this right. And you know, and that's still what type by tight he's still getting yeah. burned by tight ends on certain plays and stuff like this. Mm-hmm. And he might tell uh, the staff, the personnel, I can't, ma- I can't make Curse work right now. That's why he didn't right. play when he was with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have one more. Oh. What I was gonna say, I was talking to my boy about this. I don't think we would have won a Super Bowl with Parcells as our head coach, and here's my reason. Break it down. Because we didn't have an offensive line. Oh yeah, we had we had a razor blade thin offensive line, and then we, we had, had scheme problems too on defense. Where four three three four, we had fights. But keep going. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So now, so so that's how many coaches we didn't been through from Parcells to Garrett. So what now, Brett, But 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 this but this is it. but this is my only thing though. Hear me out. Uh-huh. If we were to keep Parcells for 2007, I think that we would have made it. We still would have been the best team in the league. But I think we would have been a more focused team. There's no way. There's no way those boys would have went to Cabo, and there's no way we would have lost to the Giants. He would have been geared up to play against those Giants. Okay, yeah, that I do believe. I do believe that part. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the but, 06, you know, man, I like, damn, man, that slick ball and everything. And, and, yeah. and, and Babado, slick whatever ball, that dude ball. name, tackling Romo right before he get a chance to cross it. And for the life of me, this was before we could challenge plays, right? And I think that mm-hmm. Jason Witten got that first down anyway, you know. Mm. But, you know, the curse of the mm-hmm. Cowboys at that time. <laughs> Curse of the Cowboys, man. Um, I was gonna say one more thing before I got off with you. Uh, talk about the defense. I think I heard, I heard you said that we got two small wide receivers on the outside. We need a big body wide receiver. Do you go on the draft and get one, or you try to look for free agent for a big body? I mean, what free, what wide receivers out there? 
if, that we can utilize. If if I'm a lame duck coach, I'm banging on the table saying, I if we draft the Thomas kid from LSU, I don't have time for him to develop. If we draft the other kid from South Carolina, which is nice, you know what I'm saying? They say he like uh-huh. the carbon copy of DK Metcalf. I need the actual DK Metcalf. Let's let's call for DK Metcalf. And and I, I think that that's what they need to do, bro. Okay, now am I tripping or Yes, these LSU wide receivers are nice, but have you noticed they only good for like a certain amount of time and then they fall off at the end of the Man, season? Man, Chase, T. Higgins, you know, Jefferson, you know, hey. Jay Jet, I mean, yeah, Jay Jet, he's yeah. nice, but like, bro, like, yeah, he got injured, but like, even before he got injured, like, bro, he fell off on the end of the, uh, end of the season. So like, they all disappeared. Hey man, you you name all of those boys, I I'll, I'll pick them up right now. You know, I still have CD, but <laughs> what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, no, no. I get I get with what you're saying. Uh, uh, Keyshawn Butte, you know, he got in trouble mm-hmm. with the uh, gambling thing, <laughs> but uh, he he showed up. He showed up against the Eagles uh, last year. He almost beat him, but he was out of bounds when he caught that ball. It kind of made me mad. But yeah, right. um, I don't know about. I haven't watched enough of the Thomas Kidd tape. Uh, I'm going to tell you, man, I, I've been bombed out, man, for this year trying to pre- prepare myself for the draft. The dude I was on the, uh, live with last night, uh, Cowboys beat, I said, yeah, dog, how many players you deep in with? He said, 37. I said, God dang. 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 I said, boy, you know 37 players already. Yeah, he he put up tape and everything. And I'm sitting here okay. like, man, bro, I, I don't have a time in the day to really study like I, I used to back in the days. But I'm on I'm this year I'm more leaning on balls, the O. C. um mm-hmm. Vach Lombardi, Foots, I mean Sky to a degree too as well. You know, i I'm leaning on those boards, whatever they generate and say what the Cowboys need, I'm I'm gonna mm-hmm. take their word for it and I'm gonna do the old uh trust but verify. You know? Right. <laughs> so and my guy JC uh JC Cowboys he's been doing a phenomenal job and DMV yeah. Cowboy man those boys do, do a phenomenal job and on Twitter my guy Dom uh he's been yeah. doing a phenomenal job man on these draft reports Defy Talk and um Outlaw Cowboys so mm-hmm. so we as a cowboy community although me as a person that I know I normally do film breakdown film analysis of the draft you guys may not get that from me, but as soon as we get the people on the team, trust me, I, I know everything and anything about that player once they officially sign with the Cowboys. Gotcha. Yeah. One last – well, yeah. Go ahead. B, you good? Oh, in the draft, B, uh, BPA or draft what we need? Oh, man, I'm going to always lean on BPA. BPA. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and if you got your tags or touching – don't window dress your uh, board here. And that's what Brian Broaders will always say. Shout out to him. He's the king of goat of that too. Trust what Brian Broaders say, man. He do his homework. Um, if tags are touching and you know you can slide back four picks or something like that and get an extra picks, do that. Do that this year because what you ultimately want to do is get more bang for your buck, meaning that if you know for sure sweat is not going at the 24th spot, but you also want powers or something like that, and you seeing that the other team don't need a center, figure out a way to finagle, man, and get powers in sweat, you know. And I know that's kind of like me reaching for the interior. I don't know how the draft is going to flow this year, but crazy things happen every season, man. Every season. Hey, Amen. Tristan Hill was drafted before DK Metcalf. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. I think I, I I seriously think they need to sign Tyler Smith just to get him out of the way. Already, already. Was his don't third? Wait on him. You got to think you got to wait till the end. Fifth year option, just add it on to his resume. Get him out the way. I, th- I think you got to wait till the end of this year because he was going into his third season, right? Ty- Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith. <clears throat> yeah, you got to wait till the end of his end of his third year. Mm. End of the third year. End of the third year. You can't extend him uh, in, into the first part of his third year, third season. So you got to wait to the end. I think that's how okay. the rules are. <clears throat> For sure. All right, Lon, I ain't going to hold you up, man. I just want to get that out. You know, I haven't talked to you in a while. Hey, bro, you was right on the money with it, man. Appreciate you for calling in, Chief. 
Indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah, my guy Aaron. Yeah, he said Tyler Smith, not Tyron. So um, <clears throat> my thing is with Tyron Smith will be <sighs> – Give him the same contract that he had last year. Pay as you play, you know. Um, and when he he only allowed one sack last season, right? And he was phenomenal, you know. I out of eight hundred and seventy some snaps, man. And I get it, right, right, right. Uh, I get most people saying that, hey. But when healthy, he plays, man. I got my guy, man, but waiting here from uh, the 206. You're in the mix, man. My dog, MJ, you're live on the nation, man. Talk to me, bro. What up, Lord? How you doing, bro? Man, I'm doing well, bro. How about yourself, man? That's good. All uh, praises to the most high. To the most yes, high. Sir. To the most high, bro. Yes, sir. Everything's good, man. I'm just uh, listening to all the fans mm -hmm. crying on here. <laughs> <laughs> But they hurt right now, MJ. They hurt, man. You can't, but you can't be hurt. Let me tell you a reason why. R reason all why. The right, right, right. Ninth in the eighties, mm -hmm. went to four NFC championship games. Right, right. Danny right. White, mm -hmm. we lost. Now some of y'all wasn't there, and some of y'all was. Right, right. But we lost. We had to take the, you know, we had to take the pill. Then the nineties came. Yeah. Then we went three Super Bowls. And then Troy Aikman, from the 96 to 2000, we was going to the playoffs, but we kept getting beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can't can win. 2000 come. Romo come. I do have, you know, average quarterback. Then Romo come. And then we had a – because this one guy was on the show. He said Romo over to – oh, my God. I can't make this up. Uh, he might be listening. He said Romo over to Patrick Crane. That's a big lie. Romo escaped uh, with his life, bringing around the corner and threw a dime to Patrick Crane, and he dropped it. Yeah. He did with sixty yards, mm -hmm. and we end up losing twenty-one seventeen. And even yeah. the defense choked again. So we had a chance there. We dropped it uh, before that. They wasn't here. Uh, oh, six. We already had six. We yeah, already had oh, oh, six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you go. Give hey. me the revisionist hey. history. Yeah, yeah. You pouring alcohol hey. down the womb, but keep going, man. Keep going. It's your time. Look at it. Look at it. And then, even before that, let's go back. In the 70s, we got this 70s. all pro tight end Jackie Smith from the Cardinals, Mike. Uh, California, everybody around the world, cowboy fan. Yeah. yeah Roger Starbuck hit him right in his chest. Right in the numbers. And he dropped man. it right yeah. in the numbers, and he fumbled it away like it was a pancake. I could not believe it. Now, he burned yeah, yeah, up yeah, when yeah, he yeah, played yeah, for the Cardinals. He, yeah, he, he gave a lot team yeah, and yeah. choked. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that would have been six Super Bowls. That was our sixth Super Bowl right there. And that was against so the Steelers. Steelers, right? Against Steelers? Yeah. 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 Get to Steelers, right in his chest. Yeah. I can believe this. You can't make this up. So now, Cowboy mm -hmm. fans, let's get to the nitty-gritty. This is what y'all going to make. The nation is split up to like the kingdom and the Bible, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom, okay. which was the Israelites, the blacks, Latinas, and natives. We were split. The split happened in the, <laughs> the northern <split>. kingdom. <laughs> right. <And> the, <laughs> the split is now with the Cowboy kingdom. 50% hate that Prescott, 50% like him. Right, now, right. Now, Queenie, 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 my boy, VIP, that's my little brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm 60. All y'all my brothers. Congratulations, man. I'm One, six, turning 60. Yeah. 100 grand. Now, y'all brought it up again. <laughs> so, Brandon <laughs> and Darius. Now, Darius, he hate. McCarthy. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Brandon hates Dak Prescott. Okay. So let me tell you what happened to all the Cowboy fans. And all the Cowboys' favorite defensive tackle. Uh -huh. I mean, defensive coach, Danny Quinn. Danny <laughs> Quinn. <laughs> Danny Quinn, Danny. <laughs> Danny Quinn, y'all. Brandon, he is kind of right, y'all. Hey, 
the defense in 21, stopped them twice. We had a chance with 247 to go down the field and score. Even though we had Dum Dum, Video King Raheem, we couldn't go down the field and score and beat right. the 49ers. If that had been a Patrick, Patrick, and we had that dangerous receiver, we had good receivers, y'all. All our receivers. We uh, uh, who we have my boy, my favorite receiver to play for Cleveland. What you talking about? Uh, receiving? What, what Cleveland? Uh, uh, Amari Cooper. Cle- yeah, we had Amari Cooper and C.D. Lamb and uh, somebody else. And we only scored 17 points. We lost 23-17. So that's a point. That's a that's a point for Darius Queen. That's a point for uh, Brandon Queen. We had a chance, y'all. Now, and 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 Lord tell you, I'm still putting my money on Dirk Prescott. But you can't come on here. And try to make excuses for the against the Joneses because we had an All American wide receiver crew. The defense stepped up. I'm gonna get Quinn his chance. They stepped up, and we lost y'all. You can't blame the off. You cannot blame the owners because I keep hearing y'all come over here making excuses, and you are making me hate the Cowboy fans just like your boy Stephen A. Smith is right. Our Cowboys fans is the worst fans in the history of the NFL. Because I'm going to tell you, we, are, we, could, we could complain because I hate losing too. Right, right, right. But you got to keep coming on here, making excuses. Come up. Joneses didn't pay for nobody. But they we had the best we had offensive weapons. And we still lost. But now when y'all say that and y'all making excuses, now you make Brandon look like he's right. Queen and everybody, you guys got to stop coming on here and try to make excuses. You making, we lost y'all. Our quarterback didn't take us over the hump. 2022, we lost 19 to 12. Now you can put that on Dak and you can put that on uh, uh, Video King Raheem with his play calling. Because right, right, when the right, score right, was right, 6 right. and 6 and it was 2nd and 2, we should not be throwing a pass to C.D. Lamb, we should have been running the ball, and we panicked, and we threw a pass on second and two, and we could have went in at halftime, nine, six, or, you see what I'm saying, Law, 13 to six. Right. So right. that's coaching. Now that make Darius look smart. Darius ain't lying, and that make Brandon look lying. Our quarterback messed the bit of boo-boo again, <laughs> and I, I, uh, our uh, offensive coordinator, which wasn't at the time, wasn't uh, McCarthy, but he was the old, he was the coach. Right, right. They right. choked. That's two times, y'all. And now this hmm. year, Green Bay Packers. Okay. Uh, our defensive coordinator was already checked out. Didn't get a quarterback, no chance. Our receiver pressured our quarterback to throw him the ball. And Dak Prescott, I hope you're listening. Uh, you, Tess, tell your brother, if somebody come to you and force you, don't throw the damn ball to them. Tell them, no, nah, I'm, I'm running my play. Run your damn route, and then I'm, that's why you don't put this blame on Dak Prescott. But the more of the story, as a Cowboy Nation, you guys keep coming on here. I keep hearing y'all talking about uh, Stephen Jones. Y'all keep talking about Jerry Jones. I don't want to hear that, man. We still got the team. We can't have Shaquille O'Neal, uh, uh, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, uh, Dr. J, Bill Russell. We can't have them on the same team. We still have three all pro all, offensive linemen. We have about we have about twelve people to make the Pro Bowl this year, y'all. We should not be losing. So that go back to Darius. He's pissed off at McCarthy for choking. So McCarthy, he got to get his head out of his ass. Now Zimmerman, Zimmerman. Do not let these dumb people. You want the, the linebackers, you got to get the big D tackles. You got to get some linebackers that know how to think. You need linebackers like we, when we had number 50. You know number 50 that we used to have? The one that got hurt all the time? Lee. Lee. We need a linebacker like Lee to come in here to put these boys in the right person. Because I ain't worried about the secondary, the safeties, and the corners. It's going to be the, the more of the story. 
if we're going to make it to the Super Bowl, it's going to be on coaching, 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 and uh, our quarterback stepping up. Because just like you say, Law, San Francisco team was better than Kansas City, but they defense, Kansas City defense, Kept them in the game until your boy from Kansas City, the quarterback, got in the rhythm, and then that's out of Super Bowl. We got to do the same thing this year with Dak Prescott. Now, I know Darius, they mad at McCarthy. I know Brandon don't like Dak, but we got to get – like I say, now, Brandon and everybody that hate Dak, y'all can come on this show and we go – and we lose 10-9 or 13-10 to or 17-13. Or or 20 to 17, you can come here and cuss me out. And then I have to agree with you. If Dak Prescott can't win a game and we hold a team under 19 points in the playoffs, Brandon was right. I would never say nothing about you again. I'm going to come over here to all the, uh, the Dak haters. If we go to the playoffs and the team beat us 20 to 17 or 20 to 19, then – I'm agree with y'all. Then you gotta let hey, Dak Prescott go. I appreciate you, you know man. I, I thank you, you know so man? much. I let you. I let you ramble along, man. You, I feel you, one man. More, I, one I, more, in closing, one more, in closing, one more, in closing. Yeah, in closing. Yeah, 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 yeah. People, we gotta stop making excuses. I know the Joneses. They make boo boos with my boy, um, Amari Cooper. I don't know. Amari should have never left. Well, they was they was favorite of They great. They favorite son-in-law. That's not here no more. So. The more of the story, man, I don't care who we got. Whoever they pick, y'all, I'm a cowboy for life, and I still have a chance of hope. Just like you say, Law. Law, I like what you keep saying. You say you got to hope and you got to believe. Yeah. If we don't hope and believe, and y'all keep coming on here, on an all-star team, we never going to win because you guys on an all-star team. That's no, that's a, that's no such thing. Because, look, I'd rather be 12 and 5, 12 and 5, 12 and 5, Instead of 5 and 12, 5 and 12, 5 and 12, which one you want, Cowboy fan? 5 and 12, 5 and 12, 5, or 12 and 5? Like, like you say, Lord, at least we got a chance to make it to the playoffs. The kids make it to the playoffs, and then anything can happen. So salute to your, to your show. Uh-huh. And Cowboy fans, please stop crying. I just want to make it to the playoffs and give my quarterback a chance. And Brandon, like I say, if Dak Prescott lose seventeen to thirteen or twenty to nineteen, just like he like he lost nineteen to twelve. All right, man. I ain't mad at you, man. Appreciate you, bro. I ain't mad at you. Come on, Rob. Come on with you, man. I ain't mad at you, you, bro. I ain't mad at you. Yes, indeed. We were one, two brothers of the same kind. (laughs) Quick to holler at her. With the same live, man. Boy, I've been live for about 30 hours, man. Um, I, I, they got, the Jones family got their hands somewhere near the knife, not necessarily on the sharp part, but they got their hands somewhere, man. But uh, I get what he's saying. And, um, uh, you know, a man convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. So I'm not finna. <laughs> Nothing to argue with my guy. But I feel him where he's coming from. And we just need, man, all I'm asking for is just a little bit movement before the draft to make sure we go into this draft BPA. And then after the draft, if you have some money left over, poke around and get one or one or two more players from there. But the only way you can do that, ladies and gentlemen, would be if you do some touching up on these players that we have now. That's my argument, man. Um, We're going to have to touch up some of these contracts, and you can't go in and say, well, we don't have to pay. We can't go in and say, okay, we got these guys at the end of life of their contract. It's not, it's not the proper way to handle it. Now, granted, this is their business. This is their company. You know, they do what they want to do with it. They bought the team financially. We bought in emotionally, right? That's how that goes, unfortunately, right? 
we don't got nothing. No, we got nothing. No stocks in this thing right here. We ain't get paid dividends for this, right? But you know, I, I feel everybody, man. I, I I hope that you guys understand the small things of what we're trying to say in this marathon type of show. I, I really appreciate each and every last one of you all for calling in and and being your part of this great community. Uh, on my way out, ladies and gentlemen, let me leave y'all with a few words here, right? And, you know, as they say, if there's one thing a man should always do, and that's mainly to himself stay true, never allow someone to change your point of view unless what they bring or mean makes sense to you. Never judge a man by sight alone, nor by the height he has grown. And when speaking, keep it at a moderate tone because raised voices turned hearts into stone you see in the beginning it was how about them cowboys man let's go the moral of the story live love and fight for another then there are those who will try to be smart they would take the decent man to alter his heart to seek to rip him apart those man you should never call a friend because they bend the lives around the truth to meet their end be sure, ladies and gentlemen, I'm only about seven to eight players deep in the draft this year. So I'm on the surface level. But the combine is going on now, and I encourage you guys to trust but verify. Watch these guys. Look for the small, subtle things. And then you can do your comparisons and analysis. Think of it this way. Think of it this way. Any player that's on their particular team is on their team. Whether it be LSU, Ohio State, North Carolina, South Carolina, Road Tide, you know, Georgia. But when they get to the pros, they're going to be on a professional team. The Dallas Cowboys <laughs> with Mike Zim, Mike McCarthy and how they're going to fit in with the confines of what we have here. So it's always a two-fold situation. So don't think that these players that you see this week and by the draft will be that end-all, be-all guy. But they just add two. And that's how that goes, ladies and gentlemen. So at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, keep your head high. Stay focused. There's always a puka that's going to come out of nowhere. You'll be like, look at puka in the core. You know? And then there are some known knowns like a C.J. Stroud. You know, he did some marvelous things, right? And then there's like a Keaton Mitchell out here in this draft too, right? So you just never know who's going to be that shining, bright honor of a guy that can change and propel your team to the right directions few years back we had a Deron Bland and make some crazy things happen for us in a good way so that's why I like the optimism but if we look at it from a only a singular view then we would say hey man there's no hope write this down hold on pain is ending that's what hope stands for shout out to you Sadiq shout out to you Roy Kevin and everybody that's tuning in that's all of the time that we have for this moment be sure to hit the like share this content let that friend or that neighbor know where to go when it's time to tune in to Cowboy Sports Talk in beyond let's go Cowboy Nation we about one love let's get it dread it run from it destiny arrives all the same now it's here. Damn! What should I say? Damn! I am. Come on. Yeah. 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 I just wanna run it all. Can we check this out? I don't really need to feel that up. Yeah. All right. Oh. Uh. I've been really in the field, I don't wish I let it feel Lately, I just wanna run it up Come on 
Don't need no bills, I make the deal I have to take it to a meal Lately, I just wanna run it up Come on Yeah Time to check this out One love to y'all Lately, I just wanna run it up Hey Ho Count that too, count it up Count it up, count it up, count it up Lately, I just wanna run it up Come on Need them ones, I need them fives Need them tens, I need that change To the safe, got blues inside Shalom Greens and pinks, it's all the same I still say and roll my chains Shout out to you, Tommy Boy, appreciate you That's a good move I'm with L, yeah I'm Stay blessed Jack, I'm with Reverend now All you got to do yeah, is say yeah, yes Come on Still the same, now switch your size Now it's about loyalty by loyalty, baby. Shout out to you, Matt Bad and Freddie. Appreciate you, Keith. Come on. You just rock what's on the shelf, and I'm not feeling it. Hey. Search for the one, but baby girl, it's nothing real as this. Can't trust a soul, I keep a hammer. Call it too legit. Hey. No. Dan the man, appreciate you, Gio. Kevin, yeah. appreciate you. Kinda check us on. Shout out to Maybe all. Game time, Stelios, Lil Maybe Bill, Duncan, Duncan Jay. See, Cowboy yeah. Networks. Yeah. Shout out I to Willie McClay and clothes. his son. Too many foes and clothes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh. I be at home alone. Ready? I be in zones alone. Shout out to Meek Mills, man. Until next time, DC for life. Five five in the house. Gotta stay live, baby. Until next time, DC for life.